Today on UTR, we deal with three generations of family dealing with previously unspoken baggage, seeking to discover the truth of who they truly are in relationship to each other, and perhaps more importantly, in relationship to themselves. So don't move a muscle. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Unproduced Table Read here on the Popcorn Talk Network. I'm so excited. Today we are reading a script called Six Letter Word by our wonderful writer, Lisan Sartor. So we're so excited to have you today in studio, Lisan. I'll get to you in a minute, but before I do, I want to introduce the rest of my cast. And before I do that, I actually want to let you guys know what this show is. <laughs> we are a show um, where we read Hollywood's hottest unproduced pilots and features. And today we're reading a really lovely feature about... Um, kind of the subtleties of cognitive disability. And I don't want to say much more because there's a lot of surprises that come. Um, but I'd say like Rain Man is a bit of an antecedent to a script <laughs> like this. And in some ways there aren't really any really tangible antecedents to the script because it's very, very unique. So I don't want to say much more, but I do want my cast to introduce themselves before we dive into this read. So awesome. Tim, take it away. Yeah, hey guys, um, I am Timothy Michael. You can find me everywhere at I am Timothy Mike. Today I will be reading Jax, Portly Guy, Tam, and Andrew. Hey, I'm Haley O'Connor and I am reading Zoe. No. <laughs> so special. Your turn. Uh, yeah. Hey, everybody. I'm Andrew Guy. Uh, today I'll be reading for Pete, Rob, the male nurse, the ticket taker, and Ed. Hi, friends. I'm Roxy Stryer, and I will be reading for Marilyn, receptionist Celeste, and curly haired woman. Hi, guys. I'm Adrian Snow. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Miss Adrian Snow. And today I'll be reading for Gloria, Miss Kim, elderly nurse, women. Uh, women's Voice, Dr. Geller, Buddy, Carla, Troy, Juliana, Mean Girl, Danny, Mother, Liz, and Janine. <laughs> Mike has the real. Hey, guys. Uh, Mike, I'm reading Ted Lewis, Tommy, Principal, Tucker, Nurse, Security Guard, Bouncer, Security Guard, Twice, Douglas, <laughs> Chipper, Nurse, Miles, Mark, and Wyeth. That's right. And um, I am actually reading for the EMT today, you guys. Oh. hey -o! Give it to me, Jeff. And of course, day. as always, I read our stage direction. But more importantly, <laughs> I want to introduce you guys to Lisan Sartor, who we're so excited to have in studio today. Lisan, thanks for being here, first of all. Oh, thank you for having me. I am so excited to hear this read. I haven't done this yet with oh, this read. Good. Well, we're excited to have you, too. Oh, boy. These mics that are pressure. a little not sensitive. So if you bring that just a little closer, that'd be great. Absolutely. Perfect. That That's perfect. Awesome. Um, so you are a baller, and we're really excited <laughs> to have you here today. Um, this feature we're reading is actually based on a short film that you wrote and yes. directed, starring Rumor Willis, yep. which is very cool. Um, it's screened at over 50 festivals, including Telluride, which is really cool, and it's oh, won a lot of so awards. so much fun. Yeah, you've won some fellowships, the Hedgebrook Writers Residency, you pr um, wrote a movie that was aired on Lifetime, so big time writer we have in here today, guys, and it's, it's an honor to have you. Ooh. Thank you. I know. <laughs> yeah, you can tell reading the script. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. You guys I will hear. Writing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but before we dive in, I love having our writers kind of give us a like one to two minute intro, kind of about the world we're entering, maybe brief inspirations, and sort of like what the script is without giving us too much. Without that's giving you too much. Yeah. Um, so you're you're get, getting into a world where, the, I, I guess the inspiration is a better place to start. So mm -hmm. I, have, I have a child on the spectrum, and he's 16 now, but when he was uh, seven, he was diagnosed. So I'm, I'm taking you into a world where people don't know a lot about autism, and, and they're just kind of thrown into the deep end, the mom in particular. Mm. And it's about how you navigate your way out of it, no matter who you are. And there's so much other backstory that I could tell you about that I won't right now, but that really is, is the, the heart of the story. And it's also about finding your way back to family. It's not just about autism. It's about trying to figure out who you are in your own world and who mm. you are to each other. Beautifully said. Um, mm. Well, we can't wait to dive in. And I say we do. Yeah. Um, so guys, this is Six Letter Word, a feature script by Lisan Sartor, and we're gonna get into it. Faded. Exterior street day. A hard rock beat pounds. A point of view barrels on foot down a working class city block. The point of view hones in on people. A middle-aged biker, a harried mom of four, a guy who drops a newspaper. Sounds, the biker strikes a match. The mom slaps her youngest, the newspaper flutters. Invade the rock beat. The POV almost knocks down the newspaper guy but never looks back. The POV rushes into an ancient diner. Interior diner continuous. The POV bursts into a rundown diner bustling with regulars. Zoe, 20s, owner of our point of view, Arms littered with tattoos and elastic bracelets, clad in a waitress uniform, yanks off headphones that cover her ears, and the rock beat stops. Your math's wrong, Delia. Ted, the burly, glaring owner, waves, of ha waves a handful of checks at Delia, a flustered waitress. Zoe grabs the checks and a pen. Back on Zoe's point of view. The numbers are huge, elongated. The pen flies across the checks, effortlessly correcting errors. Not anymore. She hands the checks to Ted and heads for the kitchen. 
Interior diner later. Zoe delivers and takes orders, corrects Delia's checks, and clears tables. A portly guy flags her. More pancakes over here? That'll make you fatter. <laughs> you can't say that to me. But I just did. She's genuinely confused. Ted hurries up. <sighs> Damn it, Zoe, what now? Zoe's point of view. Ted looms. A cacophony of clinking dishes and clattering silverware roars. The point of view swings down to a notepad. Inside, list after list. Daily waitressing steps, apologies, etc. And finally, pause at apologies. Zoe looks at the portly guy. I said the wrong thing, sorry. I'll say it was wrong and rude. Not gonna happen again. Right, Zoe? Not with him. Uh, can I order? Rob, 20s, rugged, scruffy, waves over Zoe. What do you have? A drink with you after work. Uh, can't. I've been sober eight years, five months, four days, five... Dinner? I don't have time for dinner. Eyes averted, she snaps her bracelets. I Suddenly... Uh, I have time for sex. 45 minutes after work, my shift ends at 11. A surprise Rob watches her hurry to the kitchen. Interior motel room night. Exterior neon lights illuminate random portions of a man and woman going at it. A shapely tattooed shoulder here, a male torso here. Elevated breathing fills the air. I don't do anal. She pushes away Rob. They're in a dank motel room. I don't do role play or bondage. I, I... didn't ask you to. D did, did I miss something? Should I be paying you? Uh... You're not, of course you're not. I'm sorry. I you have like... a big penis. I'm not sure I have a condom that big. She digs an array of condoms from her messenger bag. He spots the Jax tattoo on the inside of her arm. Uh, who's Jax? I'm gonna talk personal. She pushes him back on the bed and they move heatedly together. Interior motel room night. Rob sleeps. Zoe rifles through his wallet, pockets a photo of him, two brothers and, uh, and traditional looking parents, and she exits. Exterior Zoe's apartment building night. An artisan butcher shop a, a artisan butcher shop abuts a 99 cent store in a sketchy neighborhood striving for more. Zoe enters a shabby building. Interior Zoe's apartment night. Zoe enters a tidy apartment, walls lined with lists. Gloria, 60s, African American, doesn't approve of much, works on a crossword at a futon. Zoe hands her cash that she refuses. Balance my checkbook. We're good. Tell Jack six down his hierarchy. Zoe writes bounce checkbook under pay Gloria on a list. Your skirt's on backwards. She heads out. Zoe flips the bird at her neck. I saw that. Interior Zoe's apartment later. Zoe digs a shoebox from under the futon. Inside, innumerable family images. None of them hers, some torn from magazines, some photos. She adds Rob's family photo to a bursting box. Interior Jack's closet, morning. Jack's. Jack's. Jack's, eight, solid, serious, wakes in a bed tucked into an oversized closet. Zoe sprawls next to him. He pulls a crossword puzzle book from under his pillow, and she peers at it. Thirteen down, twelve letters, noisy and difficult to control. <laughs> I'm strepperous, like you. But it's always a three-letter word that means life. We leave in ten minutes, smart boy. I gotta train for the tournament. Get dressed. Use your list. She kisses him and exits. Jax keeps puzzling. Interior is always apartment later. Jax eats a cookie, paces and does a crossword, reciting clues and answers. He wears two short jeans, an oversized ACDC t-shirt, and no shoes. An ignored list rests on the table. On the table, a Wicked Witch ringtone blasts from a cell phone. Marilyn flashes across its screen above a photo of a middle-aged woman, perfectly quaffed and perpetually pissed. Showered in a towel, Zoe races in to refuse the call. Quit calling me, bitch. Jax, shoes on now, and your coat. She bolts into his room. Jax paces and puzzles. If those shoes aren't on by the time I get out there, I'm taking away your crossword. Jax yanks on his shoes. Waitress uniform on. Zoe bursts in. Where's your coat? Use your list. She yanks away his puzzle. He grabs it back, knocking on the door. Zoe opens it, revealing Gloria, checkbook in hand. Mom won't let me finish my puzzle. He won't use his list. Jax, the sooner we all start our days, the sooner we train. He hurries to check his list and finishes getting ready. He never does that for me. Well, I don't argue. Let's try it sometime. Interior Zoe's apartment building, hallway, day. Zoe, Jax, and Gloria hurry down the hall, and Zoe stops. Damn, forgot my notepad. Did you use your list? Zoe shoots him a dirty look <laughs> and rushes to their apartment. Meet you down there. <clears throat> Exterior Zoe's apartment building, day. Notepad of lists in hand, Zoe bursts outside. Marilyn, late 40s, the woman from Zoe's cell phone, leans on a Mercedes and talks to Jax and Gloria. We're going to the American Crossword Puzzle Tournament. Gloria's going to win seniors, I'm going to win juniors. Jackson, the last time we saw each other, you were six inches shorter. His name is Jax, Marilyn. Marilyn is a seven-letter word that means uncertain and bitter. <laughs> he figured that out on his own. My mother always told me Marilyn meant wished for child. <laughs> <laughs> lots of words mean lots of things. How about you call me Mimi? 
That's way better than Grandma, right? Jax ignores her and puzzles. Gloria nudges him. Sure, I guess. Do you ever answer your phone? When I want to talk to the person calling. She grabs Jax and heads for the bus stop. Gloria follows. Abe died. Pancreatic cancer. Zoe stops and doesn't look back. Gloria stands with her and Jax. Was there a funeral? Yes. If you answered your phone, you could have been there. Zoe walks, Gloria and Jax beside her. Marilyn pursues them. Abe and I were trying again. Guess you dodged a bullet. You heartless brat. You did a bang up job raising me. Marilyn slams into her car and screeches away from the curb. Was Abe the lawyer, the mortician, or the race car driver? The lawyer, her only good ex. Oh, sorry. Why, you didn't know him. He didn't read you to sleep for four years, one month, and three days. Hmm. Luis, scrawny and tatted up to compensate, ambles up. Gloria, you, your broke ass son owes me money. You got it for, you, you're good for it, right? Hell will freeze over first. We're due for a cold snap. Not according to weather.com. <laughs> Hello, pretty lady. Goodbye, Luis. The bus pulls away. <laughs> Gloria, Zoe, and Jax hurry to the bus stop. You have a son? What's his name? Can I meet him? Miles, and no, we don't talk. Miles is a five-letter word that means soldier. I should be nice to my mom, but you still don't talk to Miles? When did you talk to him last? Uh, he's my friend, not my kid. Zoe and Jax get on the bus, and Jax waves to Gloria. Exterior of Marilyn's house morning. Marilyn's Mercedes screeches into a driveway of a sleek, spacious house perched in a neighborhood of expensive homes. Still pissed, Marilyn gets out of her car and enters the house. Interior of Marilyn's house continuous. Marilyn enters a home filled by vast windows, modern furniture, and silence. She pauses at a bedroom dominated by a hospital bed. Interior of Marilyn's house, Marilyn's office, continuous. Marilyn sits at an elegant desk ordering boys furniture on a state-of-the-art computer. Exterior, public school, morning. A rough and tumble place with kids to match. Most roar out of buses, some hurrying with parents. Zoe guides the still puzzling Jax inside. Interior classroom morning. Zoe and Jax enter the crowded third grade classroom. Miss Kim, the earnest teacher, smiles at them. Jax hurries past Tommy, a towhead with a frat in his future, who, stayed, who <laughs> stage whispers. Freak. Kids laugh. Jax flushes and sits, and Zoe stalks over. What's capacious mean? Prodigious? Profuse? Don't know. Jax does. What's that make you? The kids snicker. <laughs> now Tommy flushes, and a beet red Jack continues to puzzle. Miss Styles, let's talk. Interior school hallway morning. Zoe snaps her bracelets as she and Miss Kim talk. He hid under his desk for an hour. His behavior alienates the other kids. He has no friends. Now please reconsider having him assessed. Special ed is- I was in special ed, fuck that. Interior classroom continuous. Your mom's a freak too. Tommy whispers to Jax, who works on his puzzle. Tommy snatches it, and Jax grabs for it, but Tommy dances out of his way. Jax charges Tommy, who stumbles face first into the edge of a desk. Jax grabs his puzzle, then sees blood pouring from Tommy's mouth. Screaming, Jax scrambles away. Jax's point of view, in slow-mo. Miss Kim races to Tommy. Zoe charges the point of view, but the point of view runs and trips and, trips and sails into a desk. The world combusts into shafts of light. Interior public school, principal's office, morning. Zoe and Jax sit across from Principal Tucker, a blowhard with a dash of asshole. Jax holds an ice pack to his head. Tommy lost two teeth, and unless you agree to an IEP, a what? an individual education plan tailored to meet Jax's needs. He needs bullies to stop picking on him. I don't trust you to test Private him. evaluation is an option. I can't afford that. Unless he's tested, Jax can no longer attend this school. You're lost. She stalks out with Jax in tow. Interior diner morning. Zoe and Jax rush into a crowded diner. Ted glares at them. You brought your kid? He can't stay home alone. Hey, Zoe, hey. Her one-night stand, Rob, waves from a table. She ignores him. I'm hungry. I'll bring you some food. She herds Jax into a corner table and heads to the back. Jax snatches a customer's toast. A male hand grabs him. Ted glares at Jax, who screams. Customers stare, and Zoe bursts from the back, reaching for Jax, but he shoves her, and she falls. God damn it, Jax, knock it off. The diner is suddenly quiet. Jax scuttles under a table. Zoe's point of view. Every customer stares at her. Ted looms over her. Jax hides under a table. And the point of view zooms in on Jax. Zoe stands up, fishes Jax from under the table. Let's go home. Interior of Zoe's apartment continuous. A pen flies across a crossword puzzle. He's eight. What doctor only sees kids who are under six? Can't you make an exception? 
Jax cuddles next to Gloria as they do crosswords on the futon. Zoe sits at the kitchen table, talking on her phone. A full McDonald's bag rests alongside a handwritten list of names and phone numbers. Most names have a line through them. Does anyone diagnose older kids? God damn it, you made that really fucking clear. Hello? <laughs> she slaps her phone on the table. Eight across. Eleven letter word for a cleansing of the body as part of a religious rite. You want a hint? That's against tournament rules. Ablutionary. Great job. Zoe, try 33 across, an eight-letter word for stupendous. Forget it. I hate crosswords. Uh, ginormous. That's nine letters. Jeez. Be kind. <laughs> Mom's having a tough week. Zoe dials another number from the list and talks into the phone. I'd like to make an appointment for my kid. He's five. I am not. Do a puzzle, Jax. <laughs> Do you have any... Six months, but we need... I am not five. <clears throat> I'll call you back. She hangs up and glares at Jack. I am not five, I'm eight. Stop it, or I'm taking your puzzle. You're a liar. You're impossible. No wonder you don't have any friends. Gloria's my friend. Doesn't count. You need friends your own age. Shut up, shut you up, shut, shut up, shut up, shut up. Calm down, both of you. Jack starts into his room. Zoe tries to open it. Locked. She sinks to the floor, snaps her bracelets. Gloria sits, be Gloria sits beside her and takes her hand. Zoe puts her head on Gloria's shoulder. Interior of Zoe's apartment, night. Zoe sleeps on a folded out futon in the living room. Seven down. Three letter word for friend. Pal. Zoe wakes. Light creeps from Jax's room. She enters it. Interior of Jax's closet continuous. Jax does a crossword in bed. Zoe crawls into bed with him. Sorry I got mad. You always do. Two across. Five letter word for friend. Buddy. You get mad a lot too. You're the adult. Seven down. Four letter word for friend. Mate. Gloria counts. <laughs> Yeah, for me too. Eleven down, four letter word for friend, chum. I know lots of words for friend, mommy. She stares into the dark, then kisses his head. He yawns and pulls out a battered, bookmarked copy of The Little Prince from the floor and hands it to her. She opens it and reads. To you I am nothing more than a fox like a hundred thousand other foxes. But if you tame me, then we shall need each other. She holds him close and reads. Interior doctor's office day. Zoe and Jack stare at an unsmiling receptionist. You need an appointment. Interior, another doctor's office, day. Zoe and Jack stand at another desk manned by an elderly nurse. Appointment. Interior, another doctor's office, day. A tiny nurse files while talking to Zoe and Jax. The doctor doesn't see children who... Interior, another doctor's office, day. A woman's lips move slowly. Over the age of... Interior, another doctor's office, day. A male nurse shakes his head. Six. Sorry. Interior, doctor's office, day. We can't help you. In this animal-themed office, ancient... Anxious parents watch small children play next to each other, but not with each other. Zoe marches to the front desk. Jax puzzles next to her. A poised nurse mans the phones. We don't have an appointment, but... The doctor we... doesn't take walk-ins. Besides, the doctor doesn't see... Kids over six. If I talk to her... She has a I... nine-month waiting list. It wouldn't be fair. I don't care about fair. I'm Dr. Geller. Can I help you? Dr. Geller, smart, ethereal, watches from her office door. Yep. She hustles Jax past <laughs> Dr. Geller and into the office. Dr. Geller holds up a hand to stop the nurse's protest and follows Zoe into her office. Interior, Dr. Geller's office, day. Zoe sits defiantly in a chair. Jax paces and puzzles beside her. Dr. Gell Dr. Geller studies them from her desk. And he can't go back to school, so we need help now. Well, this university genetic study could be helpful. If Jax qualifies, he'd get a free evaluation now. And that's the best I can do. She holds out a card to Zoe who, reluctantly, takes it. Exterior University Day. <laughs> Zoe guides Jax across the bustling campus past a genetics department sign to enter a low-slung, postmodern building. Interior Genetics Department Day. A small exam room. Zoe snaps her bracelets. Jax paces and puzzles. Dr. Pete Mitchell, lanky, intense, strides in to shake hands with Zoe. Jax doesn't look up. I'm Dr. Mitchell. Zoe, right? And this must be Jax. Hi, Jax. Jax, pay attention. She puts her hand over his puzzle. He slaps it away and ducks under the desk, where he loudly puzzles and he rocks. Not now, Jax. Can I talk to him? Frustrated, Zoe nods. Pete kneels beside Jax. <clears throat> Your heart's racing, huh? Too much stuff going on at once. I've been there. It helps me if I breathe. Slowly. Deeply. Like this. Zoe watches him inhale, then blow Jax's face over and over again. Jax finally smiles. They breathe in and out together. I'm Pete. Peter is a five-letter word that means stone. Exactly right. 
What's Jax mean? God has been gracious. That is one awesome name. Which, uh, which clue are you working on now? Two across. Eight-letter word for a man or boy deprived of genitals. Hmm. Castrati. Wow. Do you do a lot of crosswords? 20 a day. I'm training for Will Schwartz's tournament. He's the New York Times crossword puzzle editor. Can I do one with you after I talk to your mom? Jax nods, climbs out from under the table to puzzle on the couch. Pete again studies Zoe snapping her bracelets. My study is designed to detect genetic mutations associated with certain kinds of autism, so we can target- Jax isn't autistic, OCD maybe, but he doesn't sit in a corner and bang his head against a wall. Autism looks different for different people. Once I evaluate, evaluate him, we'll know what's going on. He's clearly brilliant. I know, right? I bet he'd get uh, a private school scholarship, but they all want him to be evaluated first. Is, is this really free? Completely. And it's important if we identify the mutations, they could be corrected in utero. I'm talking about a cure for Does everybody want to be cured? Cured for what? Jax looks at them with interest. Nothing. Finish your puzzle, okay? He ducks back into his puzzle. Zoe turns back to Pete. What's next? Uh, an evaluation of Jax, you, and... Why me? We need three generations from the same gene pool to search for simul uh, similar genetic mutations. So I'd evaluate Jax's dad... He's dead. Oh, I'm sorry. Why? You didn't kill him? He overdosed. He was a junkie. He would have been a bad dad. Pete gazes at her for a beat. Uh, then we'd evaluate another family member, like a grandparent. Or... No idea where Jax's dad's parents are, or my dad uh, and my mom. Well, getting her involved won't help anybody. Trust me, just test us. That's not how the study works. We require three generations. Let's go, Jax. Pete was going to puzzle with me. She hurries a reluctant Jax out the door, and Pete pursues them. Interior, university, hallway, continuous. Pete catches up to Zoe and Jax, who won't slow down. If I contacted your mom, you would never have to see her. But she'd call me again and again. I'll find another study. I can really help you both. What's the big deal? You must have other families. Finding ones who fit my study so well is tough. Glad you're f we're fucked up enough for you. <laughs> she hurries Jax outside. Exterior, university, continuous. Pete charges after them, but Zoe's faster. She and Jax disappear down a crowded walkway. Interior, Pete's apartment night. A tiny efficiency kitchen. Pete tosses a frozen dinner into the microwave, opens a beer, and heads into the living room. Unpacked moving boxes line the walls. Pete knocks over an open box as he sits on a ratty couch to watch TV. A photo album falls out. He kicks it under the couch. Exterior, zoo, night. Pete sits in his car in the empty zoo parking lot, eyes on the zoo entrance. A no-nonsense security guard, 40s, approaches and taps on the window. Pete opens it. Can I help you? Uh, uh, no. Zoo's closed. You gotta go. Pete closes the window, drives off. The guard watches him. Interior, Marilyn's house, bedroom, night. The hospital bed that once dominated this room is now empty of furniture. The floor is protected by drop cloths. Marilyn drinks wine and roller brushes the walls, a deep topaz. She looks around, smiles, pulls out her phone, dials. <laughs> Interior, Zoe's apartment, night. The Wicked Witch theme sounds as Marilyn's face flashes across Zoe's phone, which rests on a dining table. Zoe bustles around in her waitress uniform, and Jax puzzles with Gloria on the couch. Your mother can afford the testing on private school. Pick up. And here, I told you so? No way. She grabs the phone and refuses Marilyn's call. Well, pride goeth before the fall. You and my mother would get along. Well, she's a God-fearing woman. Please. <laughs> God fears her. <laughs> she kisses Jax and Gloria goodbye and hurries out, forgetting her jacket on a chair. Interior, Marilyn's house, bedroom, night. Marilyn pours more wine, dials again, and talks into the phone. This is Marilyn Potts. The usual, please. Oh, remember, no MSG. Thanks. She hangs up, gazes around, then strides into the hallway to interior Marilyn's house, another bedroom, night. Marilyn flips on the light to reveal a room with stylish pink frills. No photos, no posters. She opens the closet that contains one box. She opens the box, revealing CDs, a portable CD player, and Zoe-type headphones. She slips the CD into the player, the headphones over her ears, and flips off the lights. A galaxy of glow-in-the-dark star stickers soft, softly glow on the ceiling. Marilyn lies on the bed and turns on the CD player. Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon plays. Marilyn listens to the music and gazes up at the stars. Interior Zoe's apartment, Jax's closet at night. Gloria and Jax do puzzles on his bed. Why doesn't my mom see her mom? 14 across, four-letter word for Russian emperor, Tsar. They're very different. Three across, five-letter word for blue, a sore. You don't see Miles. Are you very different, too? Yes. Yes, we are. In the living room, Zoe enters, grabs her jacket, and pauses at the sound of Gloria and Jack's voices. She stands by Jax's door. Intercut Zoe in living room, 
intercut Zoe in the living room and Gloria and Jax in Jax's room as needed. Four down. Three letter word for a small island. Eight. My mom and I are different too. I guess when I grow up I won't see her either. Oh, she doesn't want that. Do you? I don't know. I'm not grown up yet. Two down. Seven letter word for secret. Mystery. Do you want to see Miles? Yes, but he doesn't want to see me. Would that make you happy? More than anything. I'll find him and make him visit. Got a picture? In my purse. In the living room, Jax's door opens and Zoe darts out of the apartment. Gloria enters, digs a photo of a grinning teen boy from her bag. She winces, stumbles towards the futon, then gasps and collapses. Her head hits the futon frame and blood flows. The Miles photo glides from her hand across the floor to land at the boy's feet. A boy's hand reaches for it. Jax sees Gloria. Jack's point of view. Light bathes her face. Her breath echoes. The point of view freezes on the blood. Jax screams. Exterior is always apartment building night. Ambulance and police lights pulse. Their shrill cries battling the sounds of a beating human heart. Zoe stands at the bus stop, transfixed by the cop car and ambulance pulling up to her building. Jax's scream overrides the din and carries over to interior is always apartment, hallway, night. Zoe's point of view bursts in. Everything is blurry except a screaming Jackson in the EMT's arms. Jax holds the Gloria and Miles photo. Hi, Miss Mom. Jax, here. She hands Jax a crossword, and he calms. She tries to hold him, but he struggles away to, to pace and puzzle. Other EMTs roll out, an unconscious Gloria. Shit, Gloria, what happened? Probably a stroke. We're taking her to get Samaritan. Zoe tries to guide Jax into the apartment. No, there's blood in there. We can't sleep out here. Interior motel room night. Shabby, dank, the door opens, creating a neon-lit rectangle against the black wall and revealing Zoe, suitcase in hand, and Jax puzzling beside her. Interior motel room night. Jax sleeps in bed next to Zoe, who clicks the bedside light on and off. When the light turns off, the room goes black. When the light turns on, shots of Zoe gazing at Jax, staring at her phone, dialing it are intercut with Zoe's phone on the table, crossword puzzles, and Jax sleeping. Zoe puts down her phone. Interior hospital room day. The door opens to reveal Gloria in a hospital bed, tubes snaking over her. Her eyes are closed, her breath is shallow. Flushed, eyes tearing, Zoe stares at Gloria from the door. Jax approaches her and stares at the stares at her, then paces and puzzles. Gloria. Gloria, what's a two-letter word for the Chinese circulating life force? It's key. You know that. Miles. Here. Her eyes are open but glassy. No, it's me, Jax. Where's Miles? I need Miles. Her eyes close and she slips back into an uneasy sleep. Find Miles and, and bring him here so you'll feel better and we'll go to the tournament, just you and me. We can't go where Miles hangs out. I'll find Miles, I promise, Gloria. Zoe takes Gloria's hand. Jax paces and puzzles. Exterior bus stop day. Jax paces and puzzles. Zoe hides her tears and the bus pulls up. Come on, Jax. Our bus is here. Are we looking for Miles? We're going home. Nine down. Five-letter word for not genuine. Fraud. She snatches his crossword. He screams and tries to grab it. Breathe. Slowly. Deeply. Like this. She inhales quickly and blows in Jax's face. He grabs the puzzle and runs for the street. Zoe chases him and breaks screech. She races to a guy who drags a kicking and screaming Jax to safety. Zoe clamps her arms around Jax and he fights her. Breathe, Jax. Deep breaths. Breathe. Breathe. Exterior bus stop later. Zoe sits on the bench, her arms around Jax, who rocks holding his crossword book and Gloria and Miles' picture. I knew you'd call. She's parked her Mercedes curbside. Not like I had anyone else. You're welcome. I didn't say thank you. <clears throat> Jesus, Zoe. Just get in. <laughs> Zoe and Jax get into her car. Exterior is Zoe's apartment building day. Marilyn screeches the Mercedes to a stop. Zoe glares at her. Marilyn revs the engine before turning it off. Interior is Zoe's apartment building hallway day. Jax puzzles and paces by their door. Marilyn eyes him with worry. Zoe pulls out a cigarette along with her key. Smoking's bad for Jax. You smoked when I was a kid. I didn't know better. I was a kid myself. Jax, time to go inside. No, I want to go into Gloria's place, find Miles' address. M who's Miles? Gloria doesn't know where he is, Jax. Wait here. She enters her apartment. Jax and Marilyn stay in the hall. Interior is Zoe's apartment day. Zoe and Jax's lists are piled on clothes in an open suitcase. Zoe drags the photo box from under the futon. Family photos spill out. She shoves the photos in the box and keeps packing. Exterior is Zoe's apartment building, dusk. Marilyn, Zoe, and Jax lug suitcases to the Mercedes. Jax spots Luis hanging at the corner with questionable cronies. I'm driving. Your driving sucks. 
Mom seems to forget it's my car. He's not paying attention to you. I'm used to it. She gets in the driver's seat. Zoe and Jax get in the back. Jax stares at Luis until the car turns a corner. Exterior of Marilyn's house tonight. Marilyn bumps the car over the curb to park in her driveway. The three get out. Jax stares up at the imposing house. Marilyn holds her hand out to Jax, who doesn't take it. She takes his instead and leads him inside. Zoe follows them. Interior, Marilyn's house, night. Your room is this way. Marilyn leads Jax past a baby grand piano, its surface covered with photos of Marilyn and Abe, robust and healthy in some photos, wan and sickly in others. Zoe follows. Zoe picks up a photo of a younger Abe and Marilyn with Zoe at Jax's age. Zoe's point of view. The photo is awash in light. It warps and it shimmers. A perfectly manicured hand takes the photo. Marilyn carefully replaces the photo on the piano and guides Jax away. Zoe slips the Abe photo into her bag. Interior Jax's room continuous. A boy's room equipped with a TV, Xbox, you name it. Zoe enters. Jax does puzzles at a small table stacked with puzzle books. Marilyn hovers over him. Zoe prowls around. When did you set all this up? Last week. I promised Abe I'd take care of you and Jax. And how about getting Jax an interview at that fancy school you donate to? I'm paying for a doctor to evaluate him. Then give me another chance. I deserve that. Says who? Damn it, Zoe. There goes your chance. Marilyn visibly restrains herself. I'll help you and Jax if you both have to live here for a year. Two weeks. Seriously? Six months. Four weeks. Two months and I'll call the school's board president tonight. Cover my rent so I can keep my place and we're in. Done. <laughs> Zoe opens a closet, reveals an oxygen tank and a walker. Marilyn closes the door and turns to Jax. Can I do a puzzle with you, Jax? Since when do you play with kids? Are you good at them, Mimi? You can teach me. She sits next to Jax, who, puzzle, who pushes a puzzle to her. Can I help? No, you're terrible at puzzles. <laughs> Where are your lists, Mimi? Not everybody needs lists, sweetie. Everybody needs lists. Not everybody uses them. She stalks into the hall. Don't smoke in the house. Zoe lights a cigarette, pushes open a bedroom door to reveal. Interior of Marilyn's house, Zoe's bedroom, continuous. The room of stylish pink frills. On the bed, an Oxford dark skirt and loafers. She tosses them onto the floor and pulls out an empty bureau drawer to turn it upside down and reveal. An envelope of photos and a baggie of yellowed pot. She dumps the pot out the window and adds the envelope of photos and the photo of Abe to the photo box from her suitcase. She flips off the lights, climbs into bed, and stares at the star stickers glowing on the ceiling. <coughs> Ooh, I skipped the page. <laughs> Interior, Marilyn's house, Zoe's bedroom night. Zoe sleeps, headphones on, the open photo box at her feet. The star stickers glow softly. Jax pads into the room and snuggles next to her. He stares up at the stars on the ceiling. She wakes up, kisses his head, and they drift off. Exterior, Marilyn's house, backyard day. Seasonal plants and trees surround a flagstone patio where Marilyn sits on a comfy outdoor sofa smoking a cigarette and reading the paper. A screen door opens behind her. She turns. Jack stands behind her. She waves her cigarette at him. Let's not mention this to your mom. She grinds it out, opens her paper to the crossword section, and pats the sofa cushion beside her. He sits in a puzzle. Interior Marilyn's house, Zoe's bedroom later. Zoe sleeps alone. Marilyn enters. Rise and shine. It's after 10. Zoe burrows under the covers. Marilyn yanks them off. Sadist. <laughs> Everyone needs a life skill. Zoe throws a pillow at her as she exits. The pillow misses. Exterior zoo day. Kids stream from school buses to the zoo entrance. Long lines of happy family snake from ticket booths. Pete stands on the entry line. He glances at a father laughing with his two young kids. Pete looks away, spots the no-nonsense security guard standing nearby. The security guard points his index and middle finger at his own eyes and then at Pete. I'm watching you. Pete hands the ticket taker a zoo membership card. Hey, Dr. Mitchell, nice to see you. Uh, Mrs. Mitchell was just here. I I'm Trevor. It's been a while. She runs his card through the reader and a loud buzzer sounds. Your membership's expired. You know to re where to renew it, right? He nods, hurries away, bypassing the member services booth to head for his car. The security guard watches him. Interior Marilyn's house hallway morning. Now freshly showered, Zoe enters the high-end kitchen. Marilyn, who's serving Jack's breakfast, spots her. Would it kill you to wear the clothes I bought you? Probably not, but it'd suck. <laughs> her lips line the kitchen walls. Jax does a crossword, a yogurt and fruit bowl next to him. Zoe kisses his head, walks to a list, and studies it. The lists make Jax feel at home. 
She holds out a yogurt and fruit bowl to Zoe, who digs cookies from the closet. She sits to share them with Jax. I spoke to my Langston friend. They're happy to interview Jax after he's evaluated. I made an appointment with a specialist. You didn't check with me. I pay for the doctor. I pick the doctor. Zoe's mouth thins. She grabs Jax's coat and helps him into it. Are we going to find Miles? You can't just leave. Zoe pulls on her coat, grabs her bag, and walks Jax to the front door. Marilyn pursues them. You do not get to walk out on me without talking to me. Zoe walks out with Jax, Marilyn on their heels. Exterior, Marilyn's house, continuous. Zoe and Jax march away from Marilyn's house. Marilyn darts inside and comes back out with her purse. Zoe and Jax are now halfway down the street, headed for the bus stop on the busy cross street. Marilyn gets in her car and drives after them. Exterior street continuous. Marilyn pulls the car next to Zoe, and Jax slowly drives. Zoe, you're being ridiculous. Zoe doesn't even look at her. She just keeps walking. A bus pulls up at the bus stop. Zoe and Jax run for it. Marilyn drives after them. Zoe and Jax get onto the bus. The bus pulls away. Marilyn drives the Mercedes after it. Exterior University Genetics Department. Genetics Department Day. Zoe speed walks Jax toward the genetics department. Marilyn hurries to keep up. Pete waits up front. Hey, Jax, good to see you. Zoe, I'm glad you changed your mind. You must be Zoe's mom. I'm Dr. Mitchell. I run the genetics study. He'll put his research first. My specialist will put Jax first. I'm going in with or without you. They glare at each other. Marilyn turns to Pete. If you don't impress me, Dr. Mitchell, my grandson and I are leaving no matter what Zoe says. Try it. Would you like to work out your differences first? Nope. Yes. <laughs> Zoe heads inside with Jax. He glances at Pete, who flashes him a smile. Marilyn fumes and follows. Pete enters last. Interior university waiting room day. Zoe's bracelets snap against her wrists. A girl wearing a, a helmet rocks and moans in her mother's arms. A boy arranges blocks in perfect lines. Zoe's eyes move from the boy arranging blocks to Jax and back again. She snaps her bracelets harder, faster. Marilyn is glued to her phone. A teen boy peers over her shoulder. The boy's mother guides the boy away. He squawks and stares back at Marilyn. Ready. He stands in the doorway. Zoe and Marilyn gratefully get up to follow him out the room. Jax in between them. Interior, university, Pete's office, day. Jax paces and puzzles. Zoe, Marilyn, and Pete sit at a table. Zoe's father's a complete narcissist. That's who should be participating in this study, not me. I'm fine. <laughs> Zoe snorts. Marilyn shoots her a look. No one's saying there's anything wrong with you. We just need to Will test... Will you help Jax or not, Marilyn? She and Pete stare at Marilyn. What do I have to do? Interior University Conference Room Day. Zoe and Pete sit at a small table. Pete has a questionnaire in front of him. No, there's no need to take time off from work. We'll work around your schedule. Now I'm going to ask you a series of standard questions we ask all parents. Um, have you or anyone in your family ever been diagnosed with a neurological disorder? Marilyn's a control freak. <laughs> I need an actual diagnosis, Zoe. Uh, I got a bullshit diagnosis as a kid. PDD, NOS, whatever that means. Uh, pervasive de developmental disorder, not otherwise specified. It's not considered a valid di diagnosis. Today you'd be diagnosed with I don't with care. Skip it. Eyes averted, she fiercely snaps her bracelets. I understand. But remember, to be in the study, I have to evaluate you. She snaps more slowly and contemplates his words. Next question. Interior University Evaluation Room Day. Pete and Zoe's dialogue runs over the following sequence. Pete takes notes next to Jax, who plays with the train set. Does Jax have any friends? Kids he hangs out with? Friends are overrated. Zoe and Marilyn watch through a window as Pete gently takes away Jax's crossword and hands Jax a Lego set. Does Jax unknowingly make inappropriate comments? Marilyn and Zoe get their blood drawn. Like, your mother sucks cocks in hell? <laughs> yes, like that. Nope, he's good. <laughs> Pete tries to get Jax to play with him <laughs> with a set of toy cars. Jax plays with them alone. Does Jax display perseverative disorders? Behaviors, excuse me. Jax slides into an MRI machine. Interior University Evaluation Room, day. What's that mean? Uh, Zoe hands... Zoe's hand repeatedly snaps her bracelets against her wrist. Pete and Zoe sit alone, and he fills out the questionnaire. The repetition of a word, action, or behavior that isn't necessary but can be soothing. Like his crosswords? She notices him watching her snap her bracelets. Their eyes meet. Zoe looks away first. Does Jax have any uh, other unusual skills, like you with math? No, we're nothing alike. He watches her for a beat, turns the page to the next question. Interior university waiting room later. Zoe and Marilyn are alone. 
Zoe snaps her bracelets, catches herself, and stops. Marilyn reads a magazine. Pete and Jack's enter. We should talk alone. We're... Does he have it or doesn't he? Pete nods. Have what? What's the word for it? How many letters does it have? Six. Zoe's eyes tear up. Pete reaches out and touches her shoulder. Zoe's point of view. Pete is blurry and pulsates. Sounds roar. Jack's cough. A <laughs> chair scrapes the floor. Tissues rustle. You okay, Mommy? Jax, in sharp focus, grabs Zoe's hand. She pastes on a smile. I'm fine, buddy. Give me a sec, okay? She snaps her bracelets and watches him sit to puzzle. I'll find great doctors and he'll go to Langston Academy. That's for typical kids. He needs to be at a 2E school for gifted kids who have learning differences. We'll get a second opinion. No, my kid, my plan. The 2E school... I want to find Miles. Uh, Who? Gloria's son. She needs Miles, but he's lost. Probably because he's a junkie. Junkie is a five-letter word for a person who gets unusual pleasure from or has unusual interest in something. Like me and crosswords. Mom said my dad was a junkie for heroin. It killed him. Zoe, you told him that? Should I have let him think his dad didn't want him? We both know how well that works. That's enough, Zoe. What's Miles a junkie for? Also heroin. Jackson, we're going to focus on finding you the right school. First we find Miles, or I'll mess up the school stuff. Adults don't negotiate with children. If we don't find Miles in five days, we stop looking and you go to a school I choose. You can't look yet. I have to evaluate you and your mother. Two weeks. Zoe, you're the adult. Act like it. One week. Deal? Deal. (laughs) She and Jax exit. Pete and Marilyn hurry after them. Exterior University Day. Zoe leads Jax to a crowded bus stop. Marilyn and Pete hurry up to them. Jax plops on the bench to do a puzzle. This is a fool's errand. You never trust me. With your track record? Can you blame me? That is so unfair. Enough. He stands between them and turns his back to Marilyn, who sits next to Jax. He speaks quietly to Zoe. You're using the search to avoid your own evaluation. Marilyn can give Jax a house, private school, expensive therapies. I can give him miles. The bus pulls up. The doors open. Zoe pulls Jax into line. Pete grabs her arm. She stares at his hand, and he drops her arm. Trust me, you don't want to mess with my mom. (laughs) Go home to your wife and kids. I live alone. Do you do this with all your patients? You need help. Someone to watch Jax. Referee you and your mother. She's not coming either. She and Jax step into the bus. Pete thinks fast. The average bus wait is 10 minutes. If you go to at least four places, your mom and I can drive you and save you 40 minutes. Average bus wait is 13 minutes, and I'm going to save... I'm going to at least five places. You'll save me 65 minutes, but... I drive. Marilyn glares, but throws the car keys to Zoe. Interior, Marilyn's car, day. Zoe settles in the driver's seat, Pete in the passenger seat. Marilyn sits in the back with Jax. Zoe painstakingly puts on her seatbelt, checks the mirrors, turns on the car. Marilyn rolls her eyes. Zoe white knuckles the steering wheel and inches into the street. Exterior street continuous. The Mercedes creeps down the street. At this rate, we may get there tomorrow. Mom, is that true? Don't distract me. (laughs) Interior, Marilyn's car, day. Zoe, dripping with sweat, rocks as she drives. We shift to her point of view. Oncoming traffic looms as it approaches in the other lane, whooshing when it sweeps past. There's Lewis! Mom! Mom, pull over! Zoe parks the Mercedes by Luis and he's and his guys at their regular corner. Jax leaps out of the car. Exterior is Zoe's apartment building, continuous. Jax races to Luis, who looks Marilyn up and down as she, Zoe, and Pete hurry up. Ooh, if I were 50, I'd hit that. Shut up and show some respect. You gonna make me nice boy? Where's Gloria's son, Miles? Project's over by Second and Grande, right? The burnout units? They tore those down two years ago, pretty lady. I haven't seen him in ages, but I'll tell you the last place I saw him for a kiss. <laughs> Get lost, man. It's never going to happen. Zoe yanks Luis to her and kisses him with tongue. Zoe! Stop it right now! No dice. Marilyn shields Jax's eyes. Zoe releases Luis. Exterior decrepit building, day. Abandoned building on 13. <laughs> Pete pulls up the Mercedes in front of the condemned <laughs> building. Interior of Marilyn's car continuous. The three adults and Jacks gaze at the decrepit building. Well, that's just downright palatial. Palatial is a seven-letter word that means like a palace. This place is a dump. You need to work on your vocabulary. <laughs> he reaches to open the door. Zoe stops him. Nope, this is no place for a kid. You're going back to Mimi's. But you said I could help. You said at that At least I... we agree on something. Not helpful. Not trying to be. <laughs> Pete drives off. Interior, Marilyn's house, Jax's room, night. Zoe and Jax sit side by side on his bed. She holds the little prince. The photo box rests on the floor. The photo of Abe, Zoe, and Marilyn sits on top. I want to go with you. If we find Miles, I'll bring him to you, I promise. She leans to kiss him, but he pushes her away. Marilyn enters. Good night, sweetheart. She leans over to kiss him and spots the Abe photo in the photo box. She picks it up, glares at Zoe. Jax, donuts for breakfast okay? She kisses him and marches out. 
Jax dodges Zoe's kiss. She glares at him and marches out after Marilyn. Interior Marilyn's kitchen night. Pete watches Marilyn enter, photo in hand, Zoe behind her. I want that back. <clears throat> if you wanted to see him, you should have been here. How was I supposed to know he was sick? You could have checked in with him, with me. That's what normal people do. They check in to let other people know they care. Normal is overrated. God damn it, Zoe. Zoe yanks on her jacket and grabs her purse. <clears throat> Where are you going? Who cares? I'm adult. Interior Marilyn's house hallway continuous. Jack sneaks down the hall to listen to Marilyn and Zoe argue. Interior Marilyn's, conti Marilyn's kitchen continuous. Zoe and Marilyn go at it. Pete waits to step in. I'm not doing this again. Waiting for you, worrying that you're dead with no idea how to find you. I never you. asked you to. Fighting isn't good for any of you, especially Jax. You know nothing about our family. I know how stressed Jax gets when you fight. Hell, I get stressed when you fight. Why are you still here? The more I help you, the sooner I can get back to my study. Go home like a normal doctor. You said it yourself. Normal's overrated. Let's go. You're not coming. The bus wait is longer at night. Interior of Marilyn's house hallway continuous. Jax sneaks back into his room and shuts the door. Interior of Marilyn's kitchen night. Zoe grabs her purse. Pete stands. Marilyn frowns. Why is finding this man so important? I promised Jax. I keep my promises. Regular kids don't remember broken promises when they grow up. Do you even hear yourself? Do either of you hear yourself? Stop focusing on that woman. She may never know what you're even doing. I'll know. She leaves. Pete exits after her. Interior of Pete's car, night. Pete and Zoe get in. Is helping Gloria just for Jax? The last time I ran away, I hit Gloria up for money. She got me sober instead, got me my job at the diner. I owe her. She puts on her headphones, and they drive. Exterior, decrepit building, night. Pete pulls his car up in front of the condemned building. Zoe gets out of the car to head inside. Pete goes after her. Wait here, I don't need help. You don't want it, that's different. Shrink yourself, not me. <laughs> She heads behind the <laughs> decrepit building. Pete follows her. Interior of Pete's car continuous. Jax peeks outside, his eyes widen at the desolate area around him. He locks the doors and darts back under the blanket. Exterior decrepit building, back, night. Zoe yanks the sideboards on a window to reveal an opening. She disappears inside. Pete follows her. Interior of decrepit building continuous. Zoe's point of view. Everything is broken, busted, covered in grime. Transparent images of Zoe, a blue-haired guy and young Miles laughing and doing drugs together, shimmer in the darkness. Where to? He stares down at Zoe, who looks back at the transparent images. Now they're gone. She, she and Pete follow a whisper of sound. He stumbles. She reaches to steady him, and they grasp hands. Who do we got here? Zoe and Pete round the corner and drop hands at the sight of Tam, blue-haired, spindly in a woman's camisole, not completely man or woman. Tam gazes up from ratty cushions on a floor littered with needles, foil, and spoons. Tam's skin is pallid, her lips smeared with ancient lipstick. A train could ride the tracks on her arms, but her eyes still burn with once clear beauty. Zoe kneels beside her. Shit, Tam, you're a mess. How did you do to you too, baby girl? <laughs> what you doing here, using again? Zoe traces the tracks in Tam's arms. Nevermore, Tam man. I swore we'd never shoot up. Girls gotta do what a girl's gotta do. This girl's gonna die if she doesn't eat. She fishes a snack bag from her purse and gives it to Tam. <laughs> Always taking care of me. Why you back? You got need a fix? Nah, he's a straight arrow. We're looking for Miles. <laughs> Third musketeer. Tam drifts. Zoe gently pats her cheek. Hey, Tam. What about Miles? <laughs> Hasn't been around in an age. Got himself a sugar mama. I asked if she have a sugar daddy for me, but I was shit out of luck. I need to fix myself up anyways. New makeup, new dresses look real pervy. What's Sugar Mama's name? Tam, stay with me and there's a 50 in it for you. What's her name? 50? <laughs> Honey, you're too good to me. <laughs> Names, Celery, Selena, Celeste. <laughs> Celeste, that's it. Celeste Divine, a stripper, a classy one, an uptown girl. Living in an uptown world. Her sing-song voice fades. Her eyes close. Zoe shakes her, but she's out. Zoe digs money from her wallet. I need 30 more. Isn't she just gonna spend it on drugs? At least she won't fuck for it. We can't leave her. We have to take her to rehab or something. That's not how it works. Pete hands her the money from his wallet. She tucks it in Tam's pocket and stands. Pete wipes a tear from her cheek. She rests her forehead on his chest for a moment, and they exit. Exterior pink lady night. Zoe and Pete approach a nondescript building. The bouncer, a brawny guy in a sharp suit, raises an eyebrow. Been a while. Been busy. 
He nods her inside but blocks Pete, making him inch past. Interior of Pete's car continuous. Jax shakes off the blanket while he's hiding under in the back seat to peek out the window. He sees Pete and Zoe enter the club. Interior pink lady continuous. Zoe and Pete enter. Zoe's point of view. The lights from the stage pulse with the music. The statuesque strippers, some with clearly masculine muscles, some as delicate as women born in the right body for the first time, are cut out figures against the light, their silhouettes gliding through the haze. The sounds of the room, a lilting laugh, a chord of music, the clink of ice against glass, the whoosh of a flame crinkling cigarette paper, roll and crescendo, each distinct, one after another above the roar of the room. Did you work up there? Zoe looks at him, his hand is on her shoulder. She shakes her head, steps away from him. No, have to be pre or post-op to do that, my waitress. Celeste is transgender? Zoe, I told you never come back. Douglas. Tall, swarthy, imposing, glares at Zoe. You broke my finger. You tried to stick it up my ass. <laughs> I dared to go where no man's gone before. We're looking for <laughs> Celeste Divine. I can help. If she tells me how long it's been since I've seen her. Fuck you, I'm not a circus freak. See ya. He walks away, but she grabs him. Eight years, three months, one day, six hours, 20 minutes, and 43 seconds. You got fat. <laughs> you got bitchier. Let's sit. <laughs> he shakes his head in disgust. Zoe, sh Zoe shoots him a shut up look and follows Douglas to the bar. Exterior Pink Lady Night. Jax slips out of Pete's car and trots to the club to stare up at the bouncer, who gazes impassively back at him. Interior Pink Lady Night. Zoe, Pete, and Douglas sit at the bar. A flat-chested stripper shimmies in front of them. I canned that bitch ages ago. Expect to first squeeze OJ before she went on? Covered in tin foil so sunlight wouldn't kill the vitamin C. You believe that shit? Zoe shows him Miles' picture. The stripper sneaks a peek. Did he live with her? I uh, picked her up a few times, but who knows? I pay these girls in cash. They come and go like the clap. Mommy! Jax runs from the bouncer to Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, Jax, how did you get here? I hid in Pete's back seat. Out! We could lose our license. He herds Jax, Zoe, and Pete down a hall lined with photos of transgender strippers. He grabs a wall photo labeled Celeste Divine, blonde, Hispanic, lovely, and hands it to Zoe. Uh, last I heard, Celeste was shooting ping pong balls out of her fake cooter in a Thai place. What's cooter mean? <laughs> it means you've been here too long. <laughs> Celeste photo in hand, Zoe yanks Jax to the back door. Still got a great ass. She flips him the bird and exits with Jax and Pete. Exterior of Marilyn's house, hallway night. Marilyn carefully carries a mug of hot chocolate to Jax's room. She pushes open the door. I have a surprise for you. The bed is empty. Her face falls. <laughs> Exterior of Pink Lady Alley night. Zoe stomps into the alley with Jax. Pete hurries after them. You are in so much trouble. The flat-chested stripper, Betty, hurries from the bar, a light robe fluttering around her. Wait, you guys looking for Celeste guy? You know him? I guess. I blew him. Pete puts his hand over Jax's ears. Jax shakes him up. Of course you did. How was I supposed to know he was Celeste? Fucked up. A guy I never seen offers me 30 for a BJ. I'm there. Gotta eat. <laughs> she jumped me when she found out. Boss had to drag her off me. Do you know where she is? Of course, we're friends, or were. She bought me dinner, gave me clothes, tried to talk me out of strip, and said I could do anything if I tried. She scribbles an address on a napkin and hands it to Zoe. Do me a favor when you see her. Tell her I'm sorry, and I miss her. You don't have to go back in there. <laughs> you can do other jobs. Betty and Zoe share an eye roll. The Wicked Witch ringtone sounds. Zoe yanks her phone out and furiously motions to, J to Jax and Pete. Get in Pete's car and they pile inside. Jax is here, he's with us. Interior of Pete's car continuous. Pete pulls the car into traffic. Zoe talks into her phone. Interior of Marilyn's house continuous. Marilyn paces in her car. Intercut Marilyn her house with Zoe in the car. I cannot believe you snuck him out. He hid in the car, I didn't know. Stop lying, I can't stand it, not again. My house. My rules, yeah, screw that. We won't be back. Good luck paying for school. You punished Jax for something I didn't even do, bitch. You can't talk to me that way. Zoe hangs up, glares straight ahead. Is Mimi angry? Don't talk, not even a little. Shouldn't Jax go to bed? <laughs> she puffs hard on her cigarette, then flicks it outside. Drop us off at a motel. I want to go home. The bloodstain's still there. Get it out, get it out, get it out now, 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 he now, now. He wails and pounds his hands on the seat and Pete pulls over. Damn it, Jax, stop it. Fuck. I just want one of us to be normal. Jax, listen. He's my kid. I'll deal with him. Jax sobs. She climbs in the back seat. Breathe, Jax. Come on. Do it. She breathes in his face, in and out. Jax pushes her away and cries harder. Zoe closes her eyes, breathes in and out, flick flicking her bracelets. Finally steady, she touches Zach. Try this. Breathe and think of three-letter words that we love. Three-letter words. 
Pan. Van. Bum. Come. That's four letters. Not the way it was written in the alley. <laughs> Forget that one, okay? Van. Man. I still want to go home. Me too. How about my place? She nods, he drives, she holds Jax. Exterior of Pete's apartment building, night. Pete carries the now sleeping Jax. Zoe walks beside him on a rundown street. They enter a salt box building. Interior of Pete's apartment, night. Pete carries Jax into the moving box lined room. Zoe follows them into the bedroom. A neatly made mattress rests on the floor. Zoe tucks in Jax, kisses him, and glides out. Pete follows her into the living room. Zoe snaps her bracelets. Pete sits on an old couch. What did Marilyn do when you were a kid and you lost it? Yell or zone out. Sounds lonely and scary. Doesn't shrinking me get old? <laughs> <laughs> he looks at her and waits. She rolls her eyes. I had massive meltdowns when I was little, worse than Jax's. One day Marilyn blasted music to drown me out. Instead, it drowned out the noise in my head and I felt better. She got me headphones after that. She did something right. By accident. When, when did your wife leave you? Or did she die? We're not talking about her. You know that I was a runaway and an addict and that my boss tried to stick his finger up my ass. I should at least know if your wife left you or died. Fine. She left. When's the last time you saw her? Two months ago. Give me a date and a time. <laughs> uh, August 23rd, 3 p.m. 59 days, 7 hours, and 3 minutes ago. Do you ever wonder why you can do that? I answer that, you answer another of mine. Deal. Yes, I used to wonder. Not anymore? That's another question. Why genetics? Best way I can help people. Why don't you wonder anymore? Because I know. Did you and your wife split because you cheated? No. <clears throat> what do you do now? I have what Jax has. Did she cheat on you? Eventually. Do you want to get help? For Jax. Why'd she cheat? She didn't know how to leave me. Why not get help for yourself, too? I get by. Did you want her to leave? Yes. Don't you want to do more than just get by? I want more for Jax. Why'd you stop loving each other? We didn't. Would you join a support group for adults with autism? I'm not a joiner. Why couldn't you stay together? Our daughter died. Brain tumor. <clears throat> she was five. I'm sorry. Me too. I blamed her. <clears throat> My wife, she pushed us to pick a treatment that didn't cure her. That's not her fault. That's not a question. I'm beat. <clears throat> yeah, me too. She disappears into the bedroom. Interior of Pete's bedroom later. Zoe lies next to Jax. She holds him, but he murmurs in protest, almost waking. She gets up, he settles, she exits. Interior of Pete's living room continuous. Zoe kneels by the couch where Pete sleeps. His eyes open. Can't sleep. Too many questions? She nods and leans forward to kiss him. He stops her. It's unethical for me to sleep with anyone in my study. I want to have sex, not sleep. I can't have sex with you. Are you young for erectile dysfunction? Zoe, I'm physically capable of having sex, but I won't because you're in my study. Get it? Can I sleep on the couch with you? No touching, promise. He tosses her a blanket. She curls up on the other end of the couch and drifts off to sleep. He watches her. Interior of Pete's apartment morning. Zoe sleeps on the couch, her blanket on the floor. Voices drift in from the kitchen. She wakes, leans over to grab the blanket, and spots the photo album under the couch. Interior, kitchen, continuous. Jack sits at the table eating a bowl of cereal and doing a crossword puzzle in the New York Times crossword puzzle book. Pete pours himself a coffee and sits with Jax. Am I dying? <laughs> No. What makes you think that? You told Mom you can cure me. What's wrong with me? Not much. You're pretty cool. Anybody up? Jax dashes out of the room, crossword puzzle in hand. <clears throat> Interior of Pete's apartment, living room continuous. Zoe looks at photos of a grinning Pete, his smiling, carefree ex-wife, and their vibrant young daughter. She slides a photo from the album, but Jax busts in and she replaces the photo. Mommy, Pete has crosswords. He curls up with Zoe. Pete enters. He and Zoe smile at each other until he sees the photo album in her lap. He shoves it back under the couch and forces a smile. <clears throat> uh, breakfast? Coffee? Done. He hands her his cup. This time, his smile is real. He sits on the couch with her and Jax. Pete said I can keep this one, and I don't even have it. Wow, a Times crossword puzzle book you don't have. A miracle. Miracles are surprising and welcome events that aren't explicable by nature or scientific laws mm. and are therefore considered to be the work of a divine agency. You don't believe in God, so it can't be a miracle. It's a coincidence. <laughs> want to go to the park today? I want to see Gloria. We'll see. I have a shift at the diner today. I'll ask Delia to sub. Give me a sec. She disappears into the other room, knocking at the door. Pete opens the door to reveal Carla. 
30s, his ex, no longer carefree, determined, but worn. I volunteered at the zoo the other day. And Teresa said she saw you. I owe you, Delia, thanks. Zoe enters, talking on her phone. She hangs up. Zoe, this is Carla, my <clears throat> ex-wife. That's not final yet. When will it be? Give me a date and the time. That's okay, Zoe. <laughs> she repeatedly snaps her bracelets. Carla studies her, then kneels next to Jax. Sunday crossword, huh? But she did. Don't use a dictionary either. Never. I'm going to win juniors at the American Crossword Puzzle Tournament. Gloria is going to win seniors when she gets better. She had a stroke. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Is it working this time? That's not what this is. What are you talking about? Pete helps other people instead of helping himself. It's a neat trick. She heads for the door, then pauses. Go into the zoo next time. Talk to people who knew Bella. I'm not your problem anymore. <clears throat> you made sure of that. Oh, so did you. She exits. Zoe stares at Pete, who faces the closed door. Was she angry or sad? Both. Let's see Marilyn today, huh? No way. Carla and I didn't try hard enough. Now we're over. Is that what you want with your mom? She turns away from him to talk to Jax. Want to visit Gloria? Yes. Maybe she's awake now. Pete, will you call the hospital and make sure she can have visitors? Frustrated, Pete nods. Jax hurries into the bedroom to get dressed. Zoe follows him. Interior, Gloria's hospital room, day. Gloria is wan, sickly, but alert. Jax, Pete, and Zoe enter. Jax rushes to hug Gloria. You're awake. <clears throat> and happy to see you. A chipper nurse enters. Gloria crosses her arms. Ready for physical therapy? No, I am not. As you get better, you have to try. I'll be back later. <laughs> she exits. Don't you want to get better for the tournament? Oh, honey. I won't. Uh, Miles will help to. you get better faster. We're looking for him. Mom and Pete got the name of a lady he may live with. We'll find him and I've then we'll... I've been down that road before. You know what road he lives on? <laughs> Gloria sighs. Interior hospital hallway, continuous. Marilyn approaches Gloria's hospital room, sees Zoe, Jax, and Pete with Gloria. She hesitates, pulls out a compact and checks her lipstick, her hair, <laughs> then heads into the room. Interior Gloria's hospital room, continuous. Marilyn enters, Zoe frowns, Pete and Gloria exchange a glance. Jax focuses on Gloria. What are you doing here? I asked her. With my approval. Marilyn kneels next to Jax to hug him and look into his eyes. I was worried about you. Always tell me where you're going, okay? He nods, she hugs him again. That's all you've got to say to him? Since when are you so nice? Happy to see you too, Zoe. You don't sound happy. That was sarcasm. Sarcasm is a seven letter word that means the use of words that mean the opposite of what you really want to say. People just say what they mean. It's much easier. Tell me about it. You want me to say what I mean? You care more about Gloria than me. Why is that a big deal? It hurts her feelings. But I'm still willing to admit I overreacted <clears throat> last night. I'm sorry. It doesn't make up for- Gloria puts a hand on her arm. What if this was you and Jax? What would you want him to say to you? Zoe breathes in and out several times, then looks at Marilyn. Want to spend the day with us? <laughs> Exterior city street day. Despite the obvious poverty, this rundown neighborhood sports some meticulously maintained yards and buildings. Ash. Interior Marilyn's car continuous. Zoe drives, slowly. Marilyn sits beside her in the passenger seat. Pete and Jax in the back. Jax reads street signs. Elm. Not exactly what I had in mind. But I'm happy to be here. All the streets are three-letter words for trees. Bay, fig, there's oak. We want 2257 oak. Exterior street continuous. Zoe painstakingly parks. Jax hops out. The adults follow Jax to a duplex with a pristine cactus garden. Jax knocks on the bottom unit front door, and a heavily made-up eye and part of a beautiful face peer out the front door window. Celeste? We're looking for Miles. His mom's in the hospital. A man's voice rumbles. Celeste retreats. Arguing voices rise and fall. <coughs> Footsteps stomp to the door. It flies open. Miles stares at Zoe, Pete, and Jax. He's clean, shaven, skinny, with old track marks up and down his arms. But he's clear-eyed, sharp. Probably funny if he wasn't so mad. What's wrong with her? She had a stroke. She gonna be okay? If you come see her. Celeste marches over. She's statuesque, buxom, beautiful. That kid belong to Miles. Zoe and Miles laugh, easing the tension. No way. You sober? Eight years, five months, 20 days, three hours. Your mom got me into the program. Lucky you. Gloria was going to take me to the crossword tournament, but she's too sick, and I want her to get better. They spend a lot of time together. Well, she's trying with someone. He slams the door on Marilyn, Zoe, Pete, and Jax. Mommy, is he going to visit Gloria? She herds him into the car. 
Pete gets in the driver's seat. Zoe shuts the car door. Marilyn pulls her aside. Let's tell Jax Miles will call Gloria soon. Then he'll forget all about this, and that'll be easier. When I was a kid, you told me, if you dress like everyone else, you'll get invited to parties. And if you talk like everyone else, other kids will like you. And my personal favorite, if you fake normal, you'll be normal. Those lies made life harder, not easier. <sighs> Abe was the only one who... Loved you? Understood you? He left. Because of you, you were horrible. I was overwhelmed. You never brushed your hair or changed your clothes or even showered. The names the other kids called you, I just, I wanted you to be happy. I still do. Then trust me. She gets in the car with Jax. Marilyn gets into the front. Interior car continuous. Jax looks up at Zoe. Miles doesn't want to see Gloria. He may never want to. But, but what's going to happen to her? She, she, she needs him to get better, and, and I need Gloria to breathe. In and out, okay? He tries to breathe with her, but still wheezes with anxiety. Think of three-letter words. Three-letter words that we love. Hum. Pete reaches back and touches Jax, who calms a little. Gum. Boy. She touches Jax, who calms more. Joy. Bat. Cat. Dog. Fog. He cries quietly now. Zoe hugs him. Exterior Marilyn's house night. Pete follows Zoe, who carries a sleeping Jax to the door. Marilyn unlocks the front door. You were great tonight. I'm very proud of you. Zoe beams. Marilyn goes inside to turn off the alarm. She and Pete gaze at each other for a beat. Jax and I are quitting your study so you and I can date. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that simple. Sure it is. Unless you don't like me, is that it? No, but I, I'm in a position of authority. I can't take advantage no of No one ever takes advantage of me unless I let them. I have to think about it. Okay? How long? A couple days. Will you come see that 2E school while you're thinking? Of course. She gives him a quick kiss on the cheek and carries Jax inside. He gazes after her. Interior Marilyn's house, Jax's room night. Zoe climbs in bed with Jax. Marilyn enters and hands Zoe the photo of Abe she took back. Please stay longer. Give me another chance. You need to be home when Glory gets there. You will be. I, I just want a little more time. Good time. We can do that. Marilyn heads for the front door. Marilyn? Thanks. Surprised, Marilyn smiles, kisses Zoe, who hugs her. Marilyn exits, and Zoe gazes at the photo. Interior of Marilyn's house, Zoe's bedroom, warning. Rise and shine! Zoe, now alone in bed, opens her bleary eyes to Marilyn holding out a steaming cup of coffee. Zoe takes it. Where's Jax? Reading about Langston. I want to see that 2E school Pete told us about. But Langston? Zoe just looks at her. Marilyn visibly restrains herself. Okay, uh, let's have breakfast first. I have to go to work. Take time off from the diner. Let me take care of your expenses, just until we figure out schools. Abe would want me to do it. Well... Uh, it's settled. Cancel your shifts for the next few weeks and get dressed. We have a big day. Her smile is sunny. She exits. Uneasy, Zoe stares after her. Interior kitchen continuous. Jax puzzles at the table. Marilyn prepares yogurt fruit bowls. Zoe grabs cookies from the cabinet. Marilyn gives yogurt to Jax as Zoe hands him cookies. Jax looks at the women. The women gaze at each other. Zoe puts back the cookies and takes the other yogurt fruit bowl. Exterior Thornton Gray Day School Day. Pete, Zoe, Marilyn, and Jax approach a nondescript building in a strip mall. Marilyn frowns but pastes on a smile when Zoe glances at her. They enter. Interior. Thornton Gray Day School Hallway Day. Pete, Zoe, Marilyn, and Jax follow Mark, 30s, an enthusiastic admissions director, down a hallway lined by photography and drawings. Pete snags a flyer he hands to Zoe. It's a group for adults with autism. It might be helpful for you to She check. stuffs it into her bag without looking at it. Marilyn bears down on Mark. You have no grounds, and your facility is disheveled. <laughs> Most of our funding goes to, into the classrooms where it counts. Your board approved that? Our board is full of concerned parents. They want us what's best for their kids. C come on in. He enters a cramped classroom where Ed, 20s, skinny, teaches six kids who study, read, and shout. Interior, Thornton Gray Day School, classroom continuous. Zoe, Pete, Jax, and Marilyn file in after Mark. Ed really gets there, our kids. Ed writes equations out on the board, twitching and hooting intermittently. One boy wears headphones that cover his ears. Another boy paces, skipping on every third step. 
Andrew, skinny, gawky, taps his fingers in a complicated rhythm against his desk. Troy, a tall drink of anger, glares. Cut it the fuck out. Andrew keeps tapping. Troy shoves Andrew's desk. Jax shrinks behind Zoe and Marilyn, who whisper to Mark. Uh, are we safe? Perfectly. Ed walks to Troy <clears throat> and Andrew. Troy, what do you do before you go from zero to 60? Crap. Again? Fine. I gotta pause, figure out if what's pissing me off is the real deal. This is. I can't concentrate with that noise. Fair enough. Now what? I gotta breathe deep five times. Ed waits. Troy breathes deeply five times in a row. Then I try to politely fix the situation. Do I really gotta? You really gotta. Fuck. Andrew, please stop with the fingers. You're making me crazy. Andrew keeps drumming. Troy shoves his desk again. Hold on. What's the last step? Troy glares, but Ed's gaze doesn't waver. Troy sighs. <sighs> Ask an adult for help. Ed, please make him stop. Andrew, give it a rest. He tosses Andrew a squishy ball. Andrew bounces it against the desk. No noise. Satisfied, Troy sits. Marilyn steers Jax out, and Pete and Zoe follow them. Interior, Thornton Gray, day school, hallway, continuous. Pete stops Marilyn and Jax, who pace and puzzle. <clears throat> Zoe looks back into Ed's classroom where he jokes with the kids. I'll never be that good with Jax. You're smart. You've taken care of yourself and Jax since he was born. And you're a math whiz. Of course you will. What if Jax goes here and becomes more like those kids, not less? Uh, he'll have room to be himself here. Zoe gazes into the classroom where Ed teaches the now calm Andrew and Troy. Jax goes to Langston, he'll be with kids he can emulate. He'll have a therapist to talk things over every day. He'll be so much better off than you were, Zoe. Remember how unhappy you were. Do you? Of course. It killed me to see you that way. Is that what you want for Jax? Zoe continues to stare at the classroom. Dissolve to Interior Langston Academy Classroom Day. A second grade classroom of perfectly behaved children pay attention to a teacher in a state-of-the-art classroom. Zoe, Marilyn, and Juliana, a snazzily put-together admissions director, observe Jack's pace and puzzle behind them. Zoe notices the kids shoot Jack's weird looks. Juliana notices too. She whispers to Marilyn. Is he okay? I'm oh, just nervous. She puts an arm around Jack's. He looks up at her, she smiles, and he quietly stands next to her. Zoe eyes them. Interior Langston Academy Lobby Day. Zoe and Marilyn pace in a posh lobby, sneaking peeks into a glass-walled office where Jax interviews with the smiling Juliana, the admissions person. They walk into the lobby. Thank you for a lovely interview. She and Jax shake hands, and he sits to puzzle. Marilyn, Zoe, let's <clears> talk. <throat> Interior, Langston Academy, Juliana's office, continuous. Zoe, Marilyn, and Juliana sit around Juliana's desk. Though his outburst at his last school was provoked, we still have some behavioral concerns. We're willing to enroll Jax on a trial basis to see how things go. Trial basis? Jax is an angel. He'll be fine. Zoe looks out at Jax, who paces and puzzles in the lobby. How long do I have to decide? Zoe, Jax is going here, of course. This is a big decision. Let us know by the end of the week. Interior Langston Academy Lobby Day. Marilyn and Zoe exit the office. They could give away his spot. They won't. You're friends with the board president. You never know. She strides to Jax, who's pacing and puzzling nearby. You nailed that interview, Jax. Without a hammer? Mm -hmm. I mean, you got in. Congratulations. <laughs> she slips an iPad from her bag and hands it to Jax. I got a cell plan so you can find new puzzles whenever you want to, just like we talked about. <laughs> cool. Thanks. You bribed him? I offered him incentive to put his best foot forward. Jax plays with the iPad. Zoe watches Marilyn lead him out. Interior hospital room day. Boy's hands do a crossword puzzle on the iPad. Isn't it cool? We can use it to practice for the tournament. He shows Gloria his iPad while Zoe stares out the window. Oh, I can't, sweetie, but your mom... It has to be you. We're a team. You and I could be a team. Team is a four-letter word for a group of people who work together toward a common goal or because of a common interest. We don't have anything in common. I need Gloria. Well, you're the smartest guy I know and <coughs> the best puzzler. <clears throat> I'll feel loads better knowing you're kicking butt for both of us at that tournament. And I'll have a whole 14 months to learn to like them. But we're going in two months. Gloria saved it for it and everything. Gloria has medical bills to pay. Mimi could pay. She pays for enough. We'll go next year. Gloria, I'll take. T I'll talk to Miles again. Make him visit. You'll get better. And you found Miles. Yes, but he won't come. 
Gloria lies back on her pillows and Zoe takes her hand. I'm sorry, it's not your fault, but I hope. Let's give Gloria some alone time. She guides Jax out. He glances back at the unmoving Gloria. The door to her room swings shut, cutting off, cutting her off from view. Interior kids clothing store day. Zoe watches Marilyn pay for a mountain of boys clothing in a hip kids clothing store. Jax puzzles and paces. Zoe's phone rings. She digs it out of her bag. Pete's face flashes on it. She answers. Marilyn eavesdrops. Interior Pete's apartment continuous. Intercut Zoe and Pete as needed. Hi Zoe, <clears throat> uh, you're there. You don't know where I am. Uh, I, I meant you answered your phone. <laughs> I don't let other people use it. Um, so I've really thought about this a, a lot, weighed the pros and cons, and um, <clears throat> do you want to go out tomorrow night? I'd rather stay in and watch TV. I, I, I meant, do you want to go out with me? Why didn't you say that? <laughs> because, <clears throat> Zoe, do you want to go on a date with me tomorrow night? Yes. Great. I'll pick you up at 7. They hang up. In his apartment, Pete smiles, tosses his phone, and catches it. In the store, Zoe smiles too. Marilyn, who's heard everything, pounces. You have a date. Let me take you shopping, please. It'll be fun, just like a real mother-daughter. Jesus, Marilyn. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way, really. I'm just so excited. She grins, and Zoe can't help but smile back. Interior upscale women's clothing store day. An uncomfortable Zoe models a stylish dress for Marilyn, who sits with Jax in a plush waiting area. He does a puzzle. Mm, this is way too dressy. I don't even know where we're going. Oh, that's a classic. You can wear it anywhere. What do you think, Jax? Jax studies Zoe. You look like Mimi. <laughs> Marilyn beams. An uneasy Zoe studies herself in the reflection, and Marilyn's in a full-length mirror. Interior Marilyn's house, Marilyn's bathroom, night. Zoe and Marilyn's reflections are side by side in a huge mirror in Marilyn's spacious bathroom. Marilyn sweeps Zoe's hair into an updo. Zoe snaps her bracelets against her wrist. And he's a doctor who cares about children. This day is the next step. What step? Is there a list I missed? Sweetie, you have to hide the crazy a little. I'm not crazy. I mean, put your best foot forward. My feet are exactly the same. <laughs> The front doorbell rings. Marilyn puts her arms around Zoe. Just don't be so literal. Interior Marilyn's house night. Pete and Jax puzzle on the couch. Pete's knee bounces. Jax stares at it. Pete stops bouncing. Zoe and Marilyn enter. Pete's knee bounces, so he stands. <clears throat> you look great. I feel uncomfortable. I made you reservations at Chez Noir. Dinner's on me. Uh, thanks. I, I made plans already. He escorts Zoe out. Exterior Marilyn's house continuous. Pete and Zoe head for his car and she snaps her bracelets. What are we doing? It's a surprise. If you don't like it, we'll leave. I promise. But I hope you like it. Really. He helps her into the car. Once she's in, he breathes deeply, steadies himself, and gets in the driver's seat. Exterior Thornton Gray, day school, night. Pete parks. He and Zoe get out. The school entrance is draped in bright streamers. The rest of the strip mall is dark. She hesitates. He smiles and guides her inside. Interior Thornton Gray, day school, auditorium, night. Rows of chairs face a small stage built up with an elaborate castle set. Pete and Zoe sit. The kids here do plays? Yep, and they build the sets too. The lights dim. Andrew and the boy who tapped his fingers strolls onto the stage singing. His voice is beautiful. Many moons ago in a far off place lived a handsome prince with a gloomy face for he did not have a bride oh he sighed alas and he pined alas but alas the prince couldn't find alas who would suit his mother's pride wrapped zoe watches andrew sing pete watches her she glances over at him and smiles he takes her hand interior thornton gray day school auditorium later the cast bows to enthusiastic applause. Zoe and Pete cheer. Exterior Thornton Gray Day School later. Zoe stands by the curb. Kids and parents exit the school. Zoe's point of view. A bright spotlight washes over each boy who passes. One boy twitches and hoots. Another pounds the headphones he wears. Another yanks on his own hair. Zoe? Zoe? The spotlight disappears. Zoe sees Pete's car and gets in. Interior burger joint night. Zoe and Pete devour burgers in a fast food burger joint. It didn't matter that they couldn't all sing. They loved it up there. <laughs> they get confident at Thornton. I thought tonight was going to be a disaster, but I had a great time. Me too. 
I haven't dated in years. I wasn't sure. I still knew how. You did okay. <clears throat> I did great. <laughs> she laughs, so does he. Interior of Marilyn's living room night. Marilyn and Jax do puzzles on the couch. Crossword puzzle books are stacked all around them. Zoe and Pete enter. So, how was your night? <clears throat> we went to a musical at Thornton Gray Day School. That's an odd date. Look at all those puzzles. Mimi is taking me to the tournament this year. She's good at puzzles. Not like you, Mom. I told you not to ask, Marilyn. I offer to take him as reward for going to Langston. I haven't said yes to that yet. Oh, he wants to go. <clears throat> right, Jax? So I accepted tonight before they gave away his spot. He starts next week. Zoe breathes deeply, in and out, five times, and snaps her bracelets. Marilyn swiftly crosses to her and whispers. How are you going to tell Jax he belongs at a place like that? Zoe stalks out the back door. Exterior Marilyn's yard continuous. Zoe lights a cigarette. Pete hurries out after her. Just tell her no. What if she's right? What if he's better off with normal kids? You just spent the night watching Thornton's kids do amazing things. Does normal even matter? Would have made my life easier. Sending him to Langston is wrong. I it... decide, not you, not Marilyn. Then which is it? Langston or Thornton? Or does it just depend on who you're fighting with at the moment? That's a shitty thing to say. Hey, I'm trying to help you. Help me, cure me, make me perfect. Aren't I enough the way I am? Everyone needs help, especially Especially you. me, because I'm a hopeless case. Would you even be interested in me if I was normal? Normal's the wrong word. Christ, I'm sorry. stop correcting me. Tonight wasn't a date, you're working. We never should have talked personal. She slams the door on her way inside. Interior of Marilyn's kitchen continuous. Zoe strides past Marilyn to Jax, and Pete follows her. Jax, we're going home. But Mimi and I are training. Zoe, I know I shouldn't have... I should have called you before accepting Langston. He's not going to Langston or the tournament. I won't pay. Yeah, I know. You'll only pay for Langston because Jax can be normal there, right? But Jax and I aren't normal. We're never going to be. Don't say that. Why not? It's true. We're fucked up and nobody can make us perfect. Zoe, that's enough. No, you don't get to say either. Try to work this out, please, for Jax. Everything I do is for Jax. He's it for me. So both of you, stop treating me like some fucked up girl to fix. Jax, let's go. No. He darts away, but she grabs him and drags him to the door. He yanks away, but she yanks harder, and he hits her. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop she it! She releases Jax, who ducks behind Marilyn. Jax! Please, let's go home. She stalks down the hall and into her bedroom. Interior of Zoe's bedroom continuous. Zoe slams her door and trips over the photo box. She throws it. Photos flutter around her, and she looks out the window. Exterior of Marilyn's house continuous. Pete looks at Zoe's empty window. He drives off. Interior of Zoe's bedroom continuous. Zoe curls in bed with the photo of the younger, of the younger her, Marilyn, and Abe on the floor. Interior of Marilyn's house morning. <clears throat> Wearing her waitress uniform, Zoe hurries past Jax's room, and Jax starts out. Are you moving out? Not without you. I'm going to work. Go back to sleep. She hugs and kisses him. He trudges back into his room. She spots Marilyn watching from her doorway. Zoe silently walks out past her and slams the front door on her way out. Interior, diner, morning. Zoe enters. Rob, her one-night stand, blocks her way. Been a long time. I have to get to work. She turns to Ted, who hands her checks. She ignores Rob and works on them. Pissed, Rob stalks back to his table. Interior, diner, day, night, day. Zoe trudges around, serving, clearing, taking orders. Customers stream in and out of booths, tables, and the diner as the light changes from morning to late afternoon to night and back again. Interior, kids' clothing store, day. Jax models a school uniform for Marilyn who takes a picture. Look at my handsome Langston boy. Send it to mom. Of course, sweetie. She puts away her phone. He gazes at her. She takes it back out and sends the photo to Zoe. Interior diner day. Zoe deposits dirty dishes in the kitchen. Her phone rings. She pulls it out and gazes at the Jack's photo. Zoe, order up. She puts away her phone and hurries off. Interior, Marilyn's house, Jax's room, night. Zoe peeks in. Jax is asleep. She cuddles next to him. Interior, Marilyn's house, Jax's room, hallway, morning. Zoe wakes up alone. She goes into the hallway. Marilyn and Jax's voices drift to her. She peeks into the kitchen, where Marilyn flips pancakes onto Jax's plate. He laughs. Marilyn sits beside him to do puzzles. In the hallway, Zoe face, Zoe's face clouds. She hurries to her room. Interior of Marilyn's house, Zoe's room, later. Jax enters in his school uniform. Zoe wears her uniform. You're working? It's my first day of school. Jax, we don't want to be late. Zoe kneels beside him. Don't let anybody give you shit. Jax! <laughs> Zoe hugs him. He runs out. Zoe looks outside where Marilyn and Jax exit the house. Jax glances at Zoe's window. Inside, Zoe waves. 
Jax gets into the car without waving back. Marilyn drives off, Zoe's phone rings, Pete's face flashes on the screen, and she refuses the call. Interior Pete's apartment living room day. Pete throws his phone under the couch. It bounces under the couch. He kneels to pick it up and spots the photo album and pushes it out of sight. He sees a rubber bracelet of Zoe's on the floor. He puts it on, snaps it against his wrist over and over again. Interior Langston classroom day. Jax puzzles at a desk in a fancy classroom. Jax's point of view. The crossword looms. The point of view peeks up to see kids swirling in and out of focus, peering at him and laughing. A mean girl walks by his desk and deliberately bumps it so that his pen skitters across the puzzle. Jax focuses on her. She stares back, her gaze challenging. My mom told me not to take shit. <laughs> Are you giving me shit? You can't say that. Miss Amanda. Jax's point of view, mm. Amanda, the hipster teacher, hurries over and her face fills the frame. Interior Marilyn's house night. Zoe peeks into Jax's room. Empty. She hurries to her room. Jax sleeps in her bed. She smooths his hair, his eyes open. How was school? I got detention asking if a girl if she was giving me shit. That was bad advice, Mom. <laughs> I'm sorry. It'll get better, promise. She snuggles next to him. He drifts back to sleep. And she worries in the dark. Interior Marilyn's house, hallway morning. Marilyn approaches Zoe's room. and She hesitates. Interior Marilyn's house, Zoe's bedroom, morning. Zoe gets dressed. Marilyn pokes her head in the door. Please don't give Jack's advice. He's got detention, I know. He told me last night. Then you know how upset he was. So please, just let me handle things, okay? She disappears before Zoe can answer. Frustrated, Zoe yanks on her jacket. Interior Marilyn's house, hallway continuous. Marilyn hesitates again outside Zoe's door. Almost goes back in, then hurries away. Exterior, Langston Academy, day. Zoe sits on a bench across from the school. She watches Marilyn guide a puzzle Jax to a mother and child. Marilyn spots Zoe. Their eyes meet. She looks away first, introduces Jax to the mother and child, but Jax doesn't look up. The bell rings, everyone goes inside, and Marilyn pauses to lecture Jax, then leads him inside. Zoe snaps her bracelets faster and faster. Interior University Interview Room Day. Pete interviews a harried mother, Danny, and her <clears throat> six-year-old, Therese. Therese hums and rocks back and forth in her chair. Is Therese's father available? Well, supposedly. We're not together. I'll give you his help. Therese's hum grows louder. Danny digs crackers from her purse and, without missing a beat, puts them in Therese's mouth. Shit. Sorry. Therese, here. With any luck, we'll make iron roads, or inroads for a cure. I need to help Therese now. Her body may not work great, but she's wicked smart. Teach me how to help her get to what's in... What? Teach me how to get what... Teach me how to help her get what's in there out here. Now that's worth something. Teresa's humming gets high and insistent. She pats her mom's arm and rocks from side to side. Danny laughs. You're welcome, baby. Pete looks from them to Zoe's bracelet on his waist. Exterior, Langston Academy, day. Zoe's back on the bench. Marilyn and, Jack Marilyn and Jax approach the school. Marilyn spots Zoe and almost waves, but Jax stops in his tracks and grips the fence. Parents and kids stare. The bell rings and people surge into the school. Marilyn tries to unclench his fingers, but he won't budge. Finally, she digs a crossword from her bag and hands it to Jax. He puzzles and heads inside. Marilyn follows him. Zoe snaps her bracelets and marches across the street. Interior Langston Academy, hallway day. Zoe approaches the classroom, peeks inside, careful to stay out of sight. She sees. Interior Langston Academy, classroom day. Jax sits doing a crossword puzzle in a class that bustles with group activities. His eyes flick up once in a while, but he doesn't notice Zoe. His teacher tries to coax him away from his desk. She sh he shakes his head, no. She sighs and she retreats. Wyeth, seven, all wiry energy, peers at Jax's puzzle. What you doing? 61 across, nine letter word for show reverence, venerates. Confused, Wyeth stares at Jax, then... I'm Wyeth. Wyeth is a five letter word that means... The bell rings. Wyeth dashes out the door past Zoe, who ducks out of sight. Jax watches him. Courageous. He returns to his puzzle, reciting the clues and answers more and more loudly. A nearby kid snickers at Jax. Other kids laugh with him. Zoe charges into the classroom. Leave him alone, you little brat! Shut up, Mom! He runs out of the classroom, and Zoe pursues him. Interior Langston Hallway continuous. Zoe catches up to Jax. I don't want you here! Go home! You yelled at my Sam. A mother and the kid, who made fun of Jax, approach Zoe. Marilyn enters and hurries up to intercept the mother and kid before they reach Zoe. I'm sorry. You and Sam should come over this weekend. We'll have mimosas. They'll have pancakes. Let's go home, Jax. Our home. Don't you miss just being the two of us? 
Jax and I are just fine. We don't need you stirring things up. I'm his mother. Shut up, shut up, both of you, just shut up. They stare at Jax, who sides, whose sides heave with exertion. All you do is upset him. She marches out with Jax, who doesn't look back at Zoe. Exterior diner day. Zoe stands at a table staring out the diner window at a mother and young son laughing at a bus stop. The diner bustles behind her. Pedestrians bustle in front of her. Hey, waitress. Interior diner day. Zoe turns and Rob glares at her. I ordered 30 minutes ago. You ordered 11 minutes ago. Are you calling me a liar? She walks off. He grabs her. She yanks away, knocking a glass of water into his lap. Hey, this rude bitch dumped water on me. He grabbed me. <sighs> the customer's always right. Apologize now or you're fired. Fuck both of you. She stalks out. <laughs> Exterior zoo night. Pete sits on a bench outside the closed zoo entrance. I know who you are. The no-nonsense security guard stands behind Pete. I asked around. I'm sorry for your loss. It's, that's tough. The guard sits with Pete. You ever going in there? I don't know. He and the guard sit in silence. Interior Marilyn's house. Zoe's room. Day, night, day. Zoe lies in a bed under the covers. In the hallway, Jax tries to doorknob. It's locked. He knocks on the door and he trudges away. In the bedroom, Zoe stares out the window at the branches of a tree. Zoe's point of view. The light on the trees change from daylight to night and back again. The branches and the leaves shimmer and stretch as if about to break. In the hallway, Marilyn tries the doorknob. She uses a key and she enters. In Zoe's room, she kneels next to Zoe, says her name, but we hear nothing. Zoe doesn't move. Worried, Marilyn withdraws. Interior Marilyn's house, hallway, day. Jax stands outside Zoe's door. He knocks. Mom. Mom, come visit Gloria with us. Interior, Zoe's bedroom, continuous. Zoe lies in bed. She opens her eyes but doesn't move. I miss you, Mommy. Interior, Marilyn's house, hallway, continuous. Jax trudges away from the door. Interior, Zoe's bedroom, continuous. Zoe hears car doors slamming. She gets out of bed. Outside, Marilyn's car pulls up out of the driveway. Zoe watches the car disappear down the street. Interior, Gloria's hospital room day. Marilyn and Jax sit with the Wayne spent Gloria who's in bed. Jax and Marilyn puzzle. The chipper nurse takes Gloria's vitals. Zoe enters. Jax's face lights up and Zoe hugs him. Hi, sweetie. Gloria, let's get you up and about. No, I'm, I'm not ready yet. Don't you want to get better? Evidently not. She marches out. Marilyn gathers her things. Jackson has homework. We should go. Maybe you could have dinner with us, Zoe? I have to work. Oh, okay. Uh, another time. Jax hugs Gloria and then Zoe. See you at home, Mommy? I won't be back until late. She watches him walk out with Marilyn and Gloria studies her. Is Marilyn in charge now? He's better off with her. When Miles was Jax's age, I drink a bottle of whiskey a day. I left him alone most nights. One night, he almost burned down the building. Grease fire. Social services took him. And when I got sober, I didn't try to get him back. I was scared I'd screw up again. He never forgave me. The truth is, I don't look for him. He'd probably tell me he hates me. Gloria makes Zoe look at her. Don't be a goddamn coward. Do what it takes to keep that boy. Interior, library night. Zoe accepts a stack of books from the librarian. All of them are autism related. Interior, Marilyn's house, Zoe's bedroom, night. Intent, serious. Zoe reads, adults with autism. She puts the book down, digs in her purse for the flyer Pete gave her on their date. On the cover, adult autism support groups. Interior, meeting room, day. Zoe pauses outside her room where a woman seated in a circle, where women seated in a circle talk. A woman with curly white hair and a facial tic speaks. I, I want to participate. I do. But PTA, man, that'd be hard even if I didn't have Asperger's. Those people are scary. <laughs> the other women laugh. Zoe enters. The women turn to look at, at Zoe. Zoe's point of view. The women elongate and they loom. Liz smiles. Are you here for the women's group support group? Zoe looks back at the door. She could still leave. Instead, she takes a seat. Interior, Thornton Gray, day school, day. Zoe follows Mark, the admissions person, and other parents through hallways dotted by kids huddled over laptops, pacing by themselves and darting in and out of classrooms. Zoe pauses at Ed's classroom. 
Kids laugh at something he says. Andrew bounces a ball on his desk higher and higher. Ed takes the ball and hands him a textbook. The parents are a huge part of our team. We need you as much as your kids do. What if we're more challenged than our kids are? <laughs> the other parents laugh, but Zoe remains serious. <clears throat> well, then it might, may, might be a little tougher, but we don't expect you to become experts overnight. It's a process. Zoe watches Ed, who high-fives a kid, and Zoe smiles. Interior diner day. Zoe enters the diner, and she approaches Ted, who sits at the register reading a paper, a huge stack of checks by his elbow. He doesn't look at Zoe. She holds out her hand. He looks up, studies her, then hands her the stack of checks. She corrects them. Ted reads his paper. Interior Pete's apartment night. Pete digs the photo album from under the couch. He hesitates, then opens it. Photo after photo of his daughter. As an infant, as a toddler, as a young kid. He tries one page, stops, tries another page, and then another. Interior Marilyn's house night. Marilyn watches Jack sleep. She walks down the hall, looks into Zoe's dark room. The ceiling stars glow. Marilyn spots the Zoe Abe Marilyn family photo on Zoe's dresser. Exterior, Marilyn's house, backyard, night. Marilyn smokes alone, then Zoe Abe Marilyn, then the Zoe Abe Marilyn family photo in her hand. Interior, public school, special ed room, day. Zoe sits at a table full of specialists and Principal Tucker. Janine, the special ed teacher, an all-around practical woman, reads from a report. Zoe snaps her bracelets. We're here to discuss Jack's styles and the accommodations our school system can make for him. Zoe's point of view. Janine's lips fill the screen, moving as she speaks, her words garbled, unintelligible. Words like typical, normal, and appropriate echo. Miss Styles? Zoe looks around and everyone looks at her. Are you ready? For a moment, Principal Tucker and the teacher shimmer and elongate. Zoe blinks, everyone looks normal again. I made a list of what Jack's needs, including descriptions of the various alternative schools. There's a copy for everybody. She hands a stack of lists to the teacher next to her, then sits back and snaps her bracelets. Interior public school, special ed room later. Zoe shakes hands with a special ed teacher, Janine, the principal, and the other students. Interior public school hallway continuous. Zoe strides down the hallway. Janine, the special ed teacher, catches up to her and hands her a pamphlet. If you're ever interested in being an aide to a special needs kid, call this agency. They need smart, dedicated people like you. She heads back to her room, and Zoe contemplates the pamphlet. Exterior public school day. Zoe walks through the schoolyard, watches the kids play. Her smile fades, and she stands alone. Interior Gloria's hospital room day. Zoe pushes open the door. Gloria's bed is empty. Interior hospital nurse's station continuous. Zoe hurries up to the chipper nurse at the nurse's station. Interior hospital, intensive care, day. Another stroke. The doctors aren't sure. Zoe's point of view. Gloria, hooked up to the tubes in the respirator, lies unconscious. Bright white light bathes her. Of the extent of the damage this time, we just have to wait and see. Zoe takes Gloria's hand. Interior of Marilyn's house day. Zoe enters. Marilyn reads on the couch. Gloria had another stroke. Marilyn follows Zoe, who strides into Jax's room. Is she going to be okay? I don't know. She pushes open Jax's door. Interior of Marilyn's house, Jax's room, continuous. Jax sits at a desk doing homework or staring at it anyway. Zoe hurries to him. Jax's smile is small. She hugs him. Mommy, you're not working. Marilyn flips through his homework. The answers are blank. What have you been doing for an hour? You have to get your grades up. I have to train. Gloria had another stroke today. Is she dying? I don't know. Jesus, Zoe, sugarcoat it. I have to help her. You can't. You're a child, sweetie. The doctors will take care of her. You have to study so you can go to the tournament. All A's, remember? That's ridiculous. Glorious need, Gloria needs me. I, I'm going. I said no, Jax. Jax shoves the papers and the books on, on his desk onto the floor. Jax and Stiles, pick up that mess. Jax, don't worry about it. You're making things worse. Back off. Jax throws his chair and it crashes across the room. Stop fighting! I hate you both! He runs out of the room and Marilyn glares at Zoe. You upset him again. You're keeping him captive. I thought you were at least better with him than you were with me. It was impossible to be good with you. Because you wanted a different daughter. Because you hated me. Do you know how many times I wondered what it would have been like to have a child who actually loved me? About as many times as I wondered what it would be like to have a mother who loved me. Jax, let's go. Jax. No answer. Exterior Maryland Street Day. Jax is blocks away from Maryland's house. Maryland and Zoe's cries of Jax reach him. He turns a corner. Exterior Maryland's house day. Zoe bursts outside. The street is empty. Her point of view is spinning. Interior hospital day. Zoe charges down the hallway. 
Zoe's point of view, harsh white lights beat down on the patients, doctors, and nurses bustling through the hallway. The point of view changes to Gloria's intensive care room. Zoe's point of view frantically sweeps the room. Gloria is unconscious. The point of view charges her bed to peer under it. Empty. The point of view changes to the bathroom and flings open the door. Empty. Zoe's point of view charges out of this room into the hallway. The harsh light attacks everything. Zoe's point of view charges, charges down the hall, and the point of view bursts from the hospital doors directly into Gloria's apartment day. Zoe's point of view checks under the couch, the bed, the sink, no jacks. It bursts from Gloria's door directly into Zoe's apartment day. The small room is quiet, no jacks. Her point of view enters Jax's room, still empty. The room spins and blurs. Her purse drops to the floor, content spilling. The point of view crashes to the floor. Big heaving sobs reverberate as Zoe's point of view curls into her knees. Her purse contents are strewn by her feet. Betty's cocktail napkin looms large in the jumble. Zoe's shaking hands reach into the frame to grab it. Zoe uncurls from the ball she's in onto the floor and unfolds the cocktail napkin to reveal Celeste's address. She picks up her phone, snaps her bracelets, and dials. Exterior Zoe's apartment building, day. Zoe waits at the curb. Pete pulls up, and she gets in with him. Interior Pete's car continues. <coughs> Zoe snaps her bracelets. Pete stops her. I'm glad you called. I'm sure he's okay. For now, until I fuck him up more, I can't fix him. He doesn't need fixing. He needs, a, he needs help adapting. Lots of people look at Jax and see a misfit. Look at it and see a boy you love. What if I'm too broken? Broken people give up. You don't. You're not some fucked up girl to fix. You're a fixer and you're a damn good at it. I was an idiot to think otherwise and I'm sorry. Are you serious? Would I kid you? Would I know? <laughs> he laughs. She smiles. Then hesitates. Then... Can we fix our shit together? I don't know about you, but I'm tired of doing it alone. Me too. He leans towards her. Hesitant, nervous, but she pulls him into her without hesitation. They kiss, and it's a damn good kiss. Mm. Exterior Celeste's duplex day. Pete at her side. Zoe knocks on Celeste's cheery red door. Celeste pulls open the door. We were trying to get Jax to tell us your phone number. I don't want her here. <laughs> Celeste steps aside to reveal Jax glaring at Zoe from inside the house. Miles stands beside him. Jax, I've been so Leave worried. Leave me alone. I'm getting Miles for Gloria. She needs him. I need you. More than anybody, but I have what you have, and I never did anything about it, so I messed us up. She tries and fails to stop her tears. Jax walks to her. Breathe, Mommy. Breathe and think of three-letter words. Fun. Sun. T. C. B. They sting. Do better. <laughs> Jax. <laughs> Zoe. He hugs her, pats her back. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome, Mommy. She laughs a little. He pulls away to study her. If we have the same thing, how come you don't like crosswords? I can't see them in my head the way you can. I see numbers that way. I file every word I learn in folders in my head. I have one for every letter of the alphabet. That's cool. Uh, I don't do that with numbers. I have a chalkboard in my head, and I write numbers and equations on it with my finger. Did you think you were weird when you were my age? Yeah. I used to wish I was like everybody else. Sometimes I still do. Me too. But if we were like everybody else, I'd lose my numbers. You'd lose your crosswords. And that would be terrible because we're special. Really? Absolutely. fucking <laughs> This time, she hugs him and he hugs her back. Interior Celeste's duplex day. Vibrant hand-painted collages adorn the walls. Photos of Miles and Celeste interwoven with magazine photos of transgender people. Pete, Zoe, and Jack sit on the couch. Celeste sits with Miles, holding his hand. You need to come see Gloria. The only thing I need to do is be black and die. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe picks up photos of Celeste and Miles on the end table next to her. She almost puts it in her bag, then puts it down. You told me your mom used to say that. You got something for her? Which side are you on? There aren't sides here, baby. Give her a chance. Yeah, she's your mom. <laughs> Miles walks out. Zoe hurries after him. Exterior Celeste's duplex backyard continuous. More collages are propped up against the duplex wall. Miles slaps paint on a collage at a work table. Zoe approaches him. It's good. My mom, your kid. But I got no room for her now. Please try. I can't. End the story. Zoe. Pete's behind them. He won't come. He won't, and Jax needs to know things can work out. They do. Just not always the way we want them to. He puts his arm around her and they head for the house. 
Wait. He digs a small collage from the piles against the walls and hands it to Zoe. It's made of old photos of Gloria and Miles. He turns back to his work, and Zoe gazes at the collage. Exterior Celeste's duplex day. Bright light washes over the collage of Gloria and Miles. Zoe holds it and kneels next to Jax on Celeste's walkway. Pete stands next to them. Will Miles change his mind? Maybe someday, but not today. Or tomorrow. Maybe not ever. What about Gloria? She needs Miles. We're her family, too. We'll be there for her, and that's what'll help her get better. Really? You're sure? Positive. But I never see you anymore. You will. We're moving home, and I'm taking you to the tournament this year. I'll borrow if I have to. Then you have to help me train. I'm not good at crosswords. I'll teach you. Deal? He gazes hopefully at her. She glances up at Pete, who smiles, and she looks back at Jax. Deal. Interior hospital, Gloria's room, day. Collage in hand, Zoe follows Jax into the room. Gloria is awake, still weak, but no longer attached to tubes or a respirator. Jack runs, Jax runs to hug her. Zoe hands Gloria the collage. Gloria studies it. Her eyes are bright with tears. Zoe pulls up a chair next to Gloria and Jax in the bed. Together, the three of them work a puzzle. Marilyn enters, and Zoe looks at her, grabs another chair, puts it next to hers. Marilyn sits and takes Zoe's hand. They puzzle together. Interior of Marilyn's house, Jax's room, day. Zoe and Jax pack, Zoe and Jax pack up Jax's room. Marilyn enters. Can I help? Sure. She kneels beside Zoe to help her pack a box. I, I wanted to, to say... You. They both stop. Me first. I'm sorry for being so hard on you and for not trying harder to understand you. I was scared you'd never be happy, and seeing you now, you're exactly who you should be. And I love who you are. I love you. I know. I love you too, and... She pauses, breathes in and out. Marilyn starts to speak, but Zoe holds up a hand to silence her and takes one last breath. I get how you felt when I ran away. Why you were angry. Why you needed all those rules. I was wrong. Marilyn hugs Zoe hard. I didn't say sorry yet. Check it off your list. <laughs> Zoe hugs her back. Exterior zoo, orangutan exhibit, day. A female orangutan grooms her baby, who clings to her chest. And they were her favorite. He and Zoe watched the mother and child through exhibit class. She knew exactly what baby, <clears throat> when that baby was born, what it ate, when it would be old enough to live on its own. She used to worry that the zoo would separate them before they were ready. She couldn't imagine living apart from us. I told her to wait until she was a teenager, and then she wouldn't be able to get away from us fast enough. His voice breaks. She holds his hands, and they watch the orangutans. Exterior, Carla's house day. A lived-in, homey neighborhood. Zoe stops Pete's car outside a tidy cottage. Pete's in the passenger seat. She kisses him. <clears throat> Pick me up at five? Sure. Breathe. A lot. He gets out of the car, <laughs> his photo album in hand, and walks up to the cottage front and knocks. Zoe watches Pete from the car. A guarded Carla opens the front door to the house. Pete hands her the album. She opens it, stares at the photos of their daughter, and tears shimmer in her eyes. She was a great kid, wasn't she? He tries to answer, but he can't. Tears roll down his face. Surprised, Carla hugs him. He wraps his arms around her. Zoe watches Carla and Pete from the car and then drives off. Interior, American Crossword Puzzle Tournament Day. Crossword fanatics in everything from black and white checked shirts to head-to-toe crossword attire swarm a room dotted by tables of people working crosswords and stages where people work table-sized crosswords. <laughs> Gripping Zoe's hands, eyes huge, breath shallow, Jax takes in the chaos. Marilyn points to a stage of kids ranging from 10 to 25, positioned at oversized crossword puzzles. Juniors are competing over there. I can't. I'll forget everything. I don't know what xenophobia means. <laughs> Remember your files? Close your eyes. Can you see the X file? He hesitates. She <laughs> smiles at him. He closes his eyes and nods. Now open it and look very carefully through your X list and find xenophobia. Have you got it? Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Xenophobia is a ten-letter word that means intense or irrational dislike or fear of people from other countries. Even I knew that one. Sarcasm. Sarcasm. <laughs> Picture time. Jax, you in front. Zoe, Pete, line up. You just can't stop controlling things, can you? Why start now? <laughs> Smile, everybody. She holds out her picture on a selfie stick. We freeze frame on the picture of Zoe, Jax, Pete, and Marilyn. Get going, buddy. Good luck. Thanks, Mom. 
He runs to the juniors competition. Pete kisses Zoe. You're gonna make a damn good aid in the fall. Yeah, I am. When Jax takes his, picture, his place on the platform, he spots a geeky boy his age staring at him. The geeky boy ducks his head, peeks at Jax again and smiles, and Jax beams back. Jax searches the crowd for Zoe and waves wildly at her. She waves back and we fade to black. Woo! Woo! Ooh, man. Uh, Lisan, I love this script oh, so you. much. Um, obviously, it's very personal to you. Yeah. If you wouldn't mind, I'd love for you to talk just for a little bit about sure. kind of the personal ties that you have to this script. Well, my son, I have a 16-year-old and a 14-year-old. My older son was always um, super sensitive to noise, no stranger boundaries, stuff like that. But we would take him to and He was in speech therapy from the time he was little. And we would take him in and they'd say, oh, he's too emotionally connected. Hmm. Um, and when he was about six, he had a major breakdown. Um, and kids aren't often diagnosed that late. Well, now they're being diagnosed later and later. And um, I remember being in the diagnosing doctor's office and she came out and, and literally, I, she was like, can we talk later? Because my son was sitting on the floor next to me. And um, I said, no, does he have it, have it or doesn't he? And she just went, literally. And she just went, wow. And damned if, and I started to sort of tear up. And, and my kid just looked up at me and he grabbed my hand and he said, Mom, are you okay? And I was like, okay, maybe we're all right. Yeah. Because he was, you know, he's, he's very connected. I mean, if you met him now, he's just grown so much. It's been amazing. But that was where it came from. It came from literally that scene and the, the screenplay itself. And it came from the scene of me, of, of her, there's a scene in there of her sitting on the bench just trying to sort through having this diagnosis. And it came from me driving home with my kid, talking, talking, talking in the back of me to no one, and crying on the way home. I mean, it's just those two images inform the whole piece. It informed the short film, it informed the, the feature. And then when I, um, after I shot the short film, and it did really, really well, and I was trying to maintain the Facebook page because I knew I was writing a feature, I did all this research to find stuff to post on the Facebook page, and I found all of this information about women who are diagnosed when their kids are diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Because women are diagnosed and girls are diagnosed much less frequently. Wow. And it was really fascinating that they would go through this intense diagnostic, diagnostic thing and all of a sudden realize, holy shit, that's me. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that's where it really came from, and that's how my background fits into it. Wow, I mean, it's such a smart, and obviously it was pulled from personal experience yeah. or personal anecdote, but it's such a smart writing choice to have Zoe struggling with the same things her son is and yeah. being in denial. Can you kind of talk about talk about that a little bit and sort of like writing that and sort of maybe both in a practical sense and from a writer's standpoint why you made that decision? Well, when I when I was writing when I wrote the short film, that wasn't the case at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I did this kind of like you know hooker with a heart of gold thing where I, it literally she was she was a hooker. <laughs> And I, cause, because I had been in this parenting class where the best parents in the class, because when, you, when your kid gets services from the state, you have to go to parenting classes. Mm -hmm. And the best parents there, seriously, she had to have been an ex-hooker and he had to have been an ex drug dealer. <laughs> you, I mean, you could just tell. And they were amazing. So I yeah. thought, okay, that would make a great character because it couldn't be me. It was just too boring. So when I went to write the feature, that character didn't fit anymore. She wasn't interesting enough. I didn't like the way that the whole, and I did write a whole version of that. Hmm. And so when I went to rewrite it and I found these women that were getting diagnosed, I thought, oh, there's somebody that's really going to have trouble parenting and, but still love her kid and not understand. And wouldn't that be an interesting revelation to have her go through and give her a fuller journey? Mm. Because you really want your characters to go from A to Z. Right. Um, and not just because of what their kid is going through. It has to be a first-hand experience. Your protagonist always has to drive every internal choice, has to drive the action. And that was a great way to do it, honestly. It made a big difference in the script. Zoe's so great. Like, I love her. I know. I love her. She's very near and dear to me. Um, I, I hate to sound like a studio executive, but like, were you worried about making her, quote, likable? Like, no. I know, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I want you to talk about it. Yeah, because honestly, for, well, for one thing, nobody's likable. All the time. <laughs> no fucking way. But, but also, when, when you are kind of going to the beat of your own drummer, you're not as worried about likability. You're more worried about, well, what's going to work for me? What's going to work for my kid? And you're not necessarily aware of offending people. Mm. So that filter isn't always there. 
and particularly if you have somebody that's gone into adulthood and haven't been treated at all. Um, and it's really interesting to watch. I've met a lot of, of people that I look at and I'm like, oh, I know what's going on there. Yeah. I mean, it's not just, it, it, after a while, you, you're around so many people on the spectrum and everybody's seriously different. Mm -hmm. But adults that don't get treated till later are particularly different. Just because I'm curious, because you said something, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but why is it that women are less often diagnosed? It's, it's interesting. My, my kid goes to a school um, called Bridges Academy. It's, it's an amazing school. And it's a 2E school. It's for gifted kids who are on the spectrum or who have other learning issues. And kids with learning issues and autism, when they're boys, if they're quiet, if they're withdrawn, that's unusual for boys. Boys are considered active and this and that and interactive. Girls, if you're quiet and you don't talk much and you sit back and you act like a girl, that's normal, which hmm. is nuts. So you're not diagnosed as often unless you're really severely affected. Wow. And that girls, like, girls makes my heart hurt. Yeah. yeah, that girls makes my heart hurt better. to hear that. Like yeah. that's, I love that. Like, and I want to talk about this because hearing those things and I, like learning about them is so important. And you've done such a good job of like making an educational script, but it's not an <laughs> educational script. You know what I mean? Because those are the worst kinds of movies. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I, have... I really worked at that too. I didn't want it to be a disease of the week movie. You know, right. Kind of thing. Yeah, I want to jump on what you just said because. Um, I have a, a friend of mine, his name is Gray Benoit, and uh, he's on the spectrum. I've been performing improv with him for about three years now, and he is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> he is so funny because it's, I mean, it's exactly like what you said. They don't have a filter a lot yep. of the time, and he just says the most honest, true thing, and it's always incredible. And, and this script, although it's not an educational script, reading this, like, I teared up a bunch of times because it's like I feel like I really understand where he comes from now. And I, and I really understand, like, a lot of the processes, and I understand, like, why he is the way he is a lot. And, like, um, it was, you know, the line that you have in there about adapting and not changing is, is really beautiful. And, like, I think that that's something that we really did with our team. There's seven of us, and he's, you know, he's one-seventh of the team. And, like, all of us learning to interact and play with him and communicate with him has been, like, one of the greatest things ever for me in it's comedy incredible. and yeah. and so that's why when I read this I was just like <sighs> it was just a lot <laughs> yeah, it is yeah. a lot I mean it's well because one of the big things that I stress is that and, and actually it's interesting when we we didn't tell Anthony when my, my son was first diagnosed he was seven and uh, by the time we finally got the diagnosis and we didn't tell him until he was ten and so because we weren't sure if we wanted him to feel different I mean he was different and, and but everybody's different so we put all these books around the house at age 10 about autism and that was for kids and once I tried to read it with him and, and he was just like <laughs> <laughs> and one day I walked in and he's reading it to himself he's got a younger brother named August and he's reading it to himself and I'm like oh so what do you think of that autism book and he's like it's fine I said well can you tell me what autism is and he started to tell me and he's like well you're, you're better at it you tell me so I described what autism you know when you're sensitive to noise you might be sensitive to this that or the other thing I described a few different things and I said, do you know anybody like that? And he thought, and he thought, and he went, August is like that. Does August have autism? And I'm like, no, your brother doesn't have autism. <laughs> I said, well, who else might have autism that you know? And he thought, and he thought, and he said, you know, I think I have autism. Wow. I said, yeah, you do. And I said, well, what do you think Let's of that? See. Yeah, and I said, well, what do you think of that? And he said, well, it's kind of like having superpowers. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's kind of like having superpowers. Because honestly, guys, if you think about it, mm -hmm. the things that some of these kids can do, yeah. it, it's amazing. So one of the big things I like to stress in, the, in this script and that I really want to hit is that everybody has challenges. Pete has challenges. Marilyn has challenges. Everybody has trouble connecting in one way right. or another. And it's how you figure it out that really matters the most. I, you know? Sorry to interrupt. I just need yeah. to ask you, why, why was it crosswords that you picked for Jax? I didn't want to do something that was similar to my son. Hmm. And, um, and, and everybody, all these kids are so different. Like it, the saying is, if you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. <laughs> I mean, everybody's different. So I was trying to find something different that I could also visualize. Like my son, when he was that age, would pace and script like that. It's called pacing and scripting. He would pace and script, but he would recite dialogue from books and movies. And <laughs> sometimes he would put them together. Like I would look at him and say, well, what are you talking about? Well, Indiana Jones meets Star Wars. Um, <laughs> 
but that's not visual. And so I wanted to have something that I could, knowing that I was going to be shooting it, that would be visual. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's also a brilliant narrative device because you can subtextually comment on the action. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So cool. Because they if that's what these kids do. I mean, they'll come up with something that you think, you think they're not listening at all. <laughs> and all of a sudden, yeah, shit. <laughs> busted. Yeah, yeah, totally busted. Uh, well, what's thematically consistent is obviously dealing with an autism-centered narrative is like a very empathetic narrative, and every single character you draw is like drawn with radical empathy. Like rather than just create a junkie, you create like a junkie who's also struggling with trans issues, and that's like so interesting. Like I don't think there's a single just like straight white dude in this script. Yeah. Or like, you know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah, totally know what you mean. Yeah, um, that was on so, purpose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to hear about that choice because it's really powerful, I think. I think for me it was all about not wanting to have a standard story so that everybody could relate in, a, in one way or another. Again, it's, it's all about nobody's typical yeah at all so and, and and honestly though when it came to tam the the transgender guy i love that scene one, yeah. I love that, that scene. scene i barely changed that and the scene between you two um about the exchange of war of um confidences those two scenes changed very little actually i fell in love with that character i don't know where he came from or she came from rather at the time it, it was most definitely a, a he it mm -hmm. wasn't a, a transgender uh, woman until later but i fell in love with that character yeah. just so that's, yeah. that's honestly where that came from. That didn't come from any desire to um, relate to anybody. I just loved the <laughs> character. I just well, loved him. It's, I mean, that's a good piece of advice to writers is like write characters that you give a shit about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know I mean, I mean like, it makes such a huge difference. Yeah. In that instance in particular, I just fell in love with Tam. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, he, came, he came out of nowhere and became a she, but just was great from the beginning. And it's two pages of dialogue, but it's yeah. so powerful. Yeah. I didn't want to cut it either. I love it. Yeah, I, I was like, it. oh, I can't cut it. You don't need to. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't play on it. <laughs> um, this is our first script reading that's adapted. So I want to hear about kind of the short film and the process of adapting a short film into a feature, what that looks like. Well, you know, I did this through the, the um, AFI Directing Workshop for Women. And so I went in there knowing uh, that I wanted to shoot a short film that I wanted to turn into a feature. Mm -hmm. So this was going to be my proof of concept. Great. Um, but when I sat down to write the feature, like I said, the, the main character's arc just didn't feel original enough or full enough. Because, you know, you have a hooker with a heart of gold. It's a great mom. The end. Right. So, so I, I needed to figure out how to complicate her life more. And, and originally, Pete was a John that you meet at the very top. And then she unexpectedly meets him at a school that she's taking her kid to. Mm. That didn't quite work anymore either. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be a more extended relationship, something where they had a place to go, where they didn't start out sleeping together, although that was in part of one of the scripts. It's been through many, many, many iterations. <laughs> um, and, and so it just kind of evolved from there. But I really had to write that draft where everything in the short film is in it, just because you feel that protective sense if it's yours. I've adapted other people's stuff too, and it's a little different. And then I had to let that go. There are still sequences or scenes or lines that were in the original, but not many, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, well, it's clear you're a director because you write very visually, and we have a lot you. of specifically um, chosen point of view sequences. Um, did you do that to give us an insight as to what the experience? Yeah. It's really, it's a very powerful choice. And, and one of the reasons I did that too is because I've always wondered, like, I want to see the world through my kids' eyes. Mm. And so I've always wondered what that's like. And I've actually got online and, you know, they, there are videos you can find online that, like, show you what it's like. And, but it's, it's never quite right. And so I realized I'm never going to see the world exactly the way he does, just like he's never going to see the world exactly the way I do. Let me figure out how my character actually sees the world. Huh. Let me become her. Let me become this child and, and disseminate from there and, and figure it out wow. you know and it, it just made me think more about not just my kid but how other people on the spectrum might think because mm. they're so different you know yeah did you direct or co-direct the short or would you consider directing or co-directing the feature oh i directed the short for sure okay. oh yeah yeah and this is for me to direct okay, i have other perfect. scripts that are to perfect. sell and whatever but this okay. is for me to direct <laughs> yeah. i hope so i can't oh, imagine yeah. giving this yeah. oh no that's, what I was, that's exactly what i was gonna no, say no no it's Com mine completely unrelated um how do you feel about the fact that pete and zoe hook up 
to me, it was always inevitable. But the interesting thing was, I originally had them hook up in the middle of the script mm. during that exchange that they have, and which I, is beautifully written. By thank the way, you. that exchange is so cool. I, that that yeah. was another. Th thank you so much because that was another exchange that literally just like. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I've adapted it here and there as circumstances about it have changed, about the story have changed, but not much of it has changed. But when I hooked them up then, it felt creepy and weird. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it was like, okay, this ain't going to work. And then I, I, I recently rewrote it so that they hooked up much, much later so that it wasn't about, um, you know, Pete being doing stuff that he shouldn't and you know because it also stops you and it takes you out of the story mm -hmm. uh -huh. you mm -hmm. know and that's the last thing you want mm -hmm. yeah so like cool. these characters are all so great and well-rounded and like i love zoe i love pete but i honestly am the most fascinated by marilyn mm. and i think the reason cool why character. is because she is she's everyone else that doesn't get it yeah. you know what i mean yeah. and like and that's most people because most people don't really get it and autism is becoming more and more relevant and prevalent in society as, as time goes on and like I just want to talk to you about writing her and like where the inspiration came with that and like how hard it was to write her or if it's you... been hard actually it's been difficult to write her because I don't want to make her a completely unsympathetic person and she's she's like I don't ever hate her by which the is way. great yeah. which is great but but I wanted to have somebody that struggled to be a mom to a child she had no understanding of because I think that happens so often and when you don't have with any kind of kid I mean you know yeah, when there's nothing no yeah, extra variable when yeah with any kind of extra variable and you just wonder how the hell do I relate to this child and then people fail people fail and it, it doesn't have to be all Marilyn's fault it doesn't have to be all Zoe's fault it just it happens and so I wanted to explore what happens when these adult people try and come back together. And I didn't necessarily even think of her as a conduit for everybody who doesn't understand. But now I love that, and it will make me actually, I do need to go back and do another Marilyn movie right before we start mm -hmm. trying to cast. And, um, and I, I will go back and look at it that way too, because I think it's a great way to look at her. Well, yeah. and what's so beautiful about it is that like, you kind of scoff at Marilyn and Zoe and how they're unable to connect, but there's so much of that with Zoe and Jax, too. Yeah. So you have these parallel narratives with, I just think it's a really, really special portrayal of family, and I love, like, a dysfunctional family story. That's like, <laughs> yeah. so, the like, cast knows that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I kind of brought it up a little bit earlier, but I want to hear your thoughts on, like, writing a missional work. And like avoiding the like infotational or what do they call that infotainment, In infotainment. <laughs> yeah. Infotainment, yeah cliches because it's like this is such a subtle interesting script but this could have been really bad do you know what I mean <laughs> yeah, I do I do so like I want to it hear... was really bad at one point <laughs> <laughs> well that's like the thesis that's and... the vomit draft yeah the... yeah exactly the vomit draft yeah, yeah it's good our writers need to know every that writer before. says that yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Um, but I want to hear about like maybe some of the early pitfalls of like writing a missional work and some of the things that you need to avoid if you're want to write a script with a deep theme like you have here well it's interesting when I wrote the short it was definitely not missional and mm -hmm. and I got all sorts of notes made it missional and I remember the guy that was that um, had given me such wonderful notes he's this amazing writer who works all the time and um, he read it to me and he said you ruined it <laughs> you ruined it go back to what you had yeah. so I did and so I tried to remember that as, as I was writing it the second time around, and because if you're writing something about an issue, what's more important is who are these people as individuals mm -hmm. and what motivates them. And part of what motivates somebody with, it, with an issue is what makes them tick. So you have to literally get inside of them, figure out why they'll ma they make the choices they make, and that shapes your narrative, and that helps it from being an infomercial. Mm -hmm. And then you go back and you look at if you have a lot, and I have a lot of knowledge. Obviously, I've been through all these different um, these different evaluations and all the kind of stuff. Then you go back and you layer in all of that stuff as as atmosphere or as um, extra information, mm. and then it feels less uh, like an infomercial, like a disease of the week movie. So yeah. long as you stay character based and really dig and make every plot point driven by that character then you'll keep away from that, I think. Yeah, story first. Yeah, it's well, and it's not even story first, it's character first, because mm -hmm. so many writers I know um, do their plot first and then figure out their characters, and not so many, but quite a few. And I always say you gotta create those characters first because you have to know what choices they're gonna make in the situations you put them in, and mm -hmm. then the situations change. Mm -hmm. Do you wow. know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
you know. Well, I'm sure as actors, you guys can speak to the value of character-driven writing. Oh my god! Yeah, well, that's sure. yeah, that's exact. Yeah, that's crazy. It's <laughs> yeah. so yeah. cool to hear someone say that. Yeah. 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 Why, why, go ahead. Uh, why drugs? Why did you have her as an ex-drug addict or a drug addict recovering? I think <laughs> I know a lot of drug addicts that are recovering, that are in recovery, and it's a really hard one day at a time thing. And it's also such a comfort for somebody who needs structure so desperately because I think a lot of people, if they're not diagnosed with something that they have, they end up self-medicating. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, this is definitely a situation I could see her in, self-medicating. And this is definitely something I can see her finding a lot of solace in, a program. You know, and so that's why it ended up there, for sure. Did mm -hmm. you ever think that it would be too much? She's a drug addict. She is kind of on the spectrum. She has a kid that has, she's on the spectrum. Did, did anybody ever tell you, you might be doing too much here? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because especially when I had, like, um, her going to meetings and stuff, and I was like, well, that's not part of the narrative. You know what I mean? So when it became just part of who she was as a part of, as opposed to an actual part of the plot, it made a big difference um, in yeah. terms of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, I really like this. It's script. beautiful. It's yeah. 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 And it, 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 it seems job. like there's uh, <laughs> an appetite for stories about autism right Doesn't now, it? honestly. Yeah. So I, when, when we read this, I was like, oh, yeah, this this people want it like I people so. want to know i think yeah. Yeah. yeah i think there's like a desire for people to to have a better understanding of it just because yeah. it's kind of in the media for better or worse you right. know with what people think causes it and such right. and so uh, i th i think it's a, a good story to have out there yeah. yeah and there's a very big debate over um that's something that i touched on in there like do you take your kid to a school with kids like right. him or do you take mm -hmm. him to a typical school and it's there's all sorts of stuff out there but yeah. And you never make it like a right or wrong. Like you leave it, you know, I think you do a really good job of like individualization, both in his diagnosis and in the experience of him. And I've kind of gathered from what I know of autism, which admittedly isn't much, that like recognizing the individuality of each yeah. case is like the yeah. important. It's really important, especially since so many people look at people who have autism and think, well, it's the absence of emotion. It's the mm -hmm. this, it's the that. And that's so far from the truth. It's actually most of the time, even if you see somebody whose affect is, is different, there's so much emotion going on. It's so hard to regulate. And people on the spectrum feel everything, just like you mm -hmm. and I do, but sometimes more. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just, yeah. Well, I, just, have, oh, oh, go ahead. I have an extremely specific question. Sure. So uh, this is something I always wonder when things happen this beautifully and they seem to align just perfectly. One of my favorite parts was when we go C's, B's, and then he says that stings. Jack Zoe, where three yeah. letter. Le did they always have three letter names? Yeah, they always did from the beginning. And you just came to that part and you were like, this is perfect? Yes. Because literally, <laughs> literally I, I was like, I, I didn't have the comforting part down yet. And I thought, that's, that was another one of those things like, oh, this works. Cool. <laughs> I never know which were like chicken or the egg, whether you mm -hmm. change their names because you were no. like, oh, we got it. That's they so always cool. Had, they always said that. This was one of those scripts and it happens very rarely. It did not write easily. Nothing writes easily. <laughs> but there were parts of it that felt like, oh, wow. This uh -huh. is this is working, you know. And Something other, spiritual, kind of. Yeah, you know. and then there were other parts where this fucking sucks. Like, <laughs> let it to be over now. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I love it. Uh, yeah. So I always ask this, and you said this was the first time you've ever had this read. Um, yeah. Was there anything that you liked, didn't like, want to change for the better or worse? I you know, anything? loved the way you guys read it. It was fantastic. I love the way you guys brought the characters alive. I think what I would do for me is to actually go through this the second act, the second half of the second act, and and see where I can. Tighten, tighten. It. tighten it. Yeah, I feel it. Because hearing it read out loud, it still loved what I heard, but I realized that it was it drags there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's 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 stuff there that I can that I can consolidate. You also mentioned changing Marilyn's character some lines mm -hmm. a little bit earlier. Do you were there specific things that stood out? No, it wasn't changing her lines. I want to give her more. <laughs> yeah, I feel like she. Yeah, because I feel like there's more to learn about her. Mm -hmm. You know, and and hearing her read, I was like, yeah, she's great, and I want more of her. Yeah. Yeah. She reminds so. me of the uh, grandmother in Gilmore Girls. Me too. Oh, yes. The relationship so, yeah. is does. that with the so much. daughter's young mother. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen every episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's great. Who doesn't like Gilmore? Girls? Oh my god. Um, um, one more thing I want to say, and I'm sorry I've said so much. <laughs> okay. I just have to ask about your writing, just the point of view. I like that. Like no matter how shitty someone is in the script you never give a point of view as the writer you let the audience always decide which I think is really interesting and it's mm -hmm. the same thing with why uh, this doesn't come off as like an information piece is because you don't ever make autism seem like a weakness you always make it seem just like 
you're just another person. And they're actually more powerful in this sense. So, like, even Rob, you never write that he's a piece of shit. You just write that she tells him to fuck off. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just think that's really, I, it's a really interesting way to write. Well, it's interesting because, um, oh God, I was in a class recently. I, I took this fantastic directing class, and one of the actors said, it's, uh, she was doing a really difficult character, and she said, it's not my place to judge this character. It's my place to be this character. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's kind of how I feel when I write them. If I judge them, they don't fulfill the potential that they have. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But if I sit there and I just write them as human beings who are flawed and need some empathy, mm -hmm. and quite honestly, having kids <laughs> makes you incredibly unempathetic at one hand, <laughs> but very empathetic in another, particularly when you have kids with challenges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you want to teach them to then turn around and be empathetic. So I think that affects how I wrote this, Yeah, for sure. Um, you're hoping to shoot this, right? Or you oh, guys yeah. are in pre-pro right now? No, we're not in pre-pro. Okay. We are actually going to, I'm going to make another pass. And uh, we're going to work with casting directors and try and go that route to Great. finance. So we have to finance and cast. Well, Please. let us know how we can awesome. help it out. If you need help with to. casting. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Um, what else can we? What else can we promote for you? I mean, it's you're busy. But, <laughs> yeah. I. Ha I mean, I'm finishing up literally, hopefully next this coming Wednesday on another short that I did, Great. Heimlich, which is also very female driven. I'm always looking for because I feel like women. We need it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Lots of need it. We do. Uh, you know, and I'm, I have a pilot that I'm writing that I'm going to do a pr that I've written that I'm going to do a proof of concept of. I mean, you know, all that kind of thing. Good. 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 So good, good. I will be looking for actors for sure. Great. For other stuff that I'm shooting for sure. Well, you have my email, so. <laughs> I do. Yeah, absolutely. I do. And I'll give you mine. <laughs> yeah, I would love it. I'm sorry, I took it. your one line. Oh, uh, was that again? your EMT line? Well, <laughs> I, I saw that. You were yeah. so excited for it. I go, what just happened? I will. This is why I should never catch myself. But I was one. <laughs> Mine, I'll do it, and I missed it. No, but you did. You got one later on. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. got it. We all know that the script. I made it. With that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Lisan, thank you so much well, for being thank here. Thank you, guys. Yeah. This yeah. Is such thank a great you. Experience. Good. I appreciate it. You're welcome, um, guys. This has been the Unproduced Table Read here on the Popcorn Talk Network. Today we read Lisan Sartor's beautiful feature, Six Letter Word. Keep your eyes peeled because we're gonna get this thing made. Yeah, yeah. damn right. Oh, yes. yeah. Um, and guys, my name is Jeff. If you guys want to find me online, you can do so at Jeffrey C. Graham. A couple things. First of all, these scripts were printed to us heavily discounted from ARA Printing on um, Magnolia in Burbank. We it's, love them. We love the them. It's right yeah. down the road. It's unbelievably inexpensive to print scripts there. Mm -hmm. And we have a promo code. So if you go with the promo code TableRead, you'll get 10% off your order. Um, also, if you like today's episode, I'd like to recommend another one. And we read a feature by a guy named Chris Perizzo called The End of the Stars. Mm -hmm. And it's also a family-driven, um, it's actually more of a cancer narrative, but um, a very good script. I think that was episode eight. So it's kind of tonally similar, and I'd check that one out if you like today. Um, once again, my name's Jeff. You can find me online at Jeffrey C. Graham. Feel free to pitch me a script there. How about the rest of you guys? Thanks for tuning in, guys. I am Timothy Michael. You can find me everywhere at I am Timothy Mike. Hey, I'm Haley O'Connor. That is Haley with two Y's. If you don't use two Y's, you're not two Y's on Twitter at Haley O'Connor. Hey, everybody. I'm Andrew Guy. You can find me at Andrew Guy on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Roxy Stryer. You can find me at Roxy Stryer. Um, okay, I'm Adrian Snow. You can follow me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Miss Adrian Snow. It's M S E D R I N S N O W. You can also catch me on the Outlander After Show next Sunday on AfterBuzz. Uh, Mike Kalinowski. You can find me right there at Mike Kalinowski. I'm Lisa Sartor, and you can find me at Lisa Sartor. <laughs> 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 that's um, L I S A N N E S A R T O R, right? Got it. Perfect. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next week. We're reading a ridiculous kind of blue collar British comedy called Grafton. It's going to be awesome. We'll see you at 10 a.m. next Friday on the Unproduced Table Read. Thanks. Bye, guys. Producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Spitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network. We would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals. 